Hello and welcome to a run my one shot stream. I'm here as your DM. I'm in the middle of everybody, actually. Um, but today we are running a one shot from this book, One Shot Wonders, which is the one I've been using uh, most lately because I wanted to try as many out as I could before giving a good review on it. The one we are going through today is called Trial and Error. Um, these are my... Drake, stop with the pretzels. <laughs> <laughs> um, these are my lovely uh, party victims. Um, so let's go. We'll start at the top and you just introduce yourself with your name, uh, your, who you're playing today, maybe what class they are, and then we'll go from there. And someone in the chat, tell me if the music is too loud. <laughs> it's good. Okay. <laughs> so, Evan, you're first. Uh, Evan, as stated, uh, playing Ariel, a rogue fairy standing uh, two foot tall. Mm -hmm. um, is kind of fed up with his life as a uh, peon for the, the fae and wants to live his dream of eating as much as possible. <laughs> Okay. Drake, you're next. I am Drake. I am playing Roland, the dwarven fighter. Um, I'm probably the tall person of this group today. So <laughs> at four foot two, I tower above them. Uh, and cold is my purview. I carve ice in my spare time. Mm -hmm. uh, next, we have uh, Kirsty. Hi. I'm Kirsty. I'm playing Prism. Uh, she is a druid Kenku, and she left the city and the life of crime that she grew up in there to seek a means of flight out in the wilds because her curse as a Kenku means she can't fly and she desperately wants to. So, cool. That's who I'm playing today. I'm the DM. Next is Jerry. <laughs> <laughs> I am Jerry. I'm playing Luna. Uh, it's the beginning of the of, of her wizard adventures. Mm -hmm. She's uh, well, we're all level four, right? So yes. it's not it's not exactly new, but mm -hmm. she's in the in the is is looking for knowledge, looking for more more things to do in the world. So she's excited to to start a new thing. Uh, oh, you have. And I'm, I'm also quite small, so I, I, I'm like three, I think. You are you yeah, are small. I think Prism is like around four foot, four and a half feet tall. She's quite short. Kenkus are like five feet or under, so. Perfect. Yeah, I think tiny. <laughs> I like it. I like that they're all tiny. Um, okay, so let's get started. You guys were given the task of currying a package to a remote Arctic facility. The pay was good. The crate was small, so you took the job. It, well, um... You are moving from one city, which is not too far out from this facility. Uh, you know you are looking for the Nexus Laboratory, and your package is to go to um, Mrs. Uh, actually, sorry, Doctor Doctor Valeria Livia, and you are were told not to open the package, just to deliver it. Um, in a relatively quick manner. Uh, you know that the travel northward will take maybe half a day to get to this facility. Um, there are multiple routes and you guys all collectively decide on one and you guys step out into the cold, the frigid frosty air nipping at you. It's, it's bitter cold uh, and the air is just bone dry, almost sucking the the moisture out of your body as you guys are on this uh, trek. And uh, you very quickly forget what warmth even is as you're meandering forward, um, your breath coming out in plumes of, of smoke and um, the wind howling as you move through the... Um, move through the arctic tundra stomping through the the about two feet of snow um well probably not that high probably more like a foot of snow um still high but you know not that high 
Um, the road has pretty, um, you know, not well traveled. This is not like the most uh, used route. Um, but it is a traveled road. People use this uh, to get through the pass of this this mountain range. And as you guys are walking, you probably spend about an hour or so uh, moving forward. Um, what do you guys do? You know, if it's that cold, I'm going to do an experiment. And I'm going to see if... if uh, my mage armor might protect me from the cold, maybe, because it's some sort of, like, force, you know? Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to cast mage armor on myself and see if uh, if I'll, uh, if it's going to do any anything against the cold a little bit, because I don't know if I packed enough, you know, clothing for <laughs> something like this. Right. So you would have prepared at the town um, before you uh, moved ahead on this adventure, but... You go ahead and you cast your magic. Um, everybody else can see just a, a faint glow as the mage armor um, wraps around your tiny um, wizard friend. And uh, you give it a second, but no, it doesn't seem to affect anything with the <laughs> the frost and the cold. How are we carrying? Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry, go ahead. No, go, you go for it. Start. I was just going to say Prism would be walking a bit ahead of the group, um, sort of trying to keep on an eye on the trail, mm -hmm. and uh, she'd sort of kind of glance back over her shoulder, fluff her feathers a little bit, tilt okay. her head from side to side, and just kind of keep walking. How did we prepare the... Uh, how did we prepare the package? Is it big enough, uh, small enough to fit in a backpack? Is it... Yes, um, it's actually, it's pretty small, maybe like this big. I mean, it's well wrapped. It seems to be in some sort of box. Um, one of you tried to shake it just to see how secure it was on the inside. Nothing rattled or anything. Um, so, and it's tied up with some twine and a little bit of, um, there's like a adhesive stick. It's a sticker. It's a sticker on top. <laughs> uh, a magical sticker. Um, but it has the name and the uh, Nexus Laboratory uh, details on there. Um, so one of you could have it and um, in a backpack or you I'll could be it in my pack. I'll, okay. I'll put it in my pack. I probably have the best weight capability okay. sure, for carrying. Um, and I'll be behind the Kenku um, stomping down the snow as we go to make a better path for the two smallest. The Kinko is just a little shorter than I am. Yes. Yeah, and she's also extremely light, so depending on how hard packed the snow is, she might kind of be almost on top of it for most of this. Um, mm -hmm. A little bit like Legolas. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. Those bird, bre those bird bones make it nice. Uh, oh, can I, I chip off a good chunk of ice? Yeah. Is there is it just snow? Is there ice? There's also ice. Um, it's that cold here, uh, and any any not every bit of water, but most of the water that you see would be frozen. Um, it's just that bitterly so, cold. So I'll snap off about a, a three inch cube of ice, just a small chunk, and take sure. out a small uh, chisel. And as we walk, I'm just going to be carving a little ice dragon. Sure. Um, so you walk up your, this is a very mountainous, cliffy kind of area. So you actually find like a huge, it's a pretty big um, like icicle that's just on the edge of the cliff. You snap that off and you just start going. I will need you to make a roll to see how well you create this dragon as we're moving forward. And Kirsty, I need you to make a roll uh, for perception since you are in the front. Perception or survival? Uh, either. You can do either. Either. I'll do the same, so. So I do have ice carving as proficiency, wood carving tool, so that deck Starting us off normal. <laughs> it's a nine for a 14. Cool. And what did you get? Uh, Should have just posted. Yep, there it goes, there it goes. <sighs> okay, oh. Okay, so um, you start carving this, Rowan, and you're, you're um, looking 
at it and you're you visualize pretty well you know you know gen- i mean you haven't at this point in your life you're only level four so you haven't necessarily seen a real dragon but you've seen pictures of dragons and that kind of stuff um the problem is that this little piece of ice that you have is just not quite big enough um and you're still early in your ice carving career so you start getting uh, a little bit too detailed for your skill level, and it ends up looking more like a lizard than a dragon. Um, and in fact, you start trying to carve out a wing, and it snaps off, so it looks even more like a, uh, a lizard than a dragon. But you know, it's keeping your you occupied as you move forward. Uh, Prism, you actually are looking ahead, and it is ungodly cold. Um, You are trying to keep an eye out for any other creatures or anything, um, but you're not really seeing much. There's not much life here. You know, there's a couple um, trails you can see as you're moving through. In fact, with even with a 14, you would notice like off to the right, um, starting from about the right, moving across the the road and the trail that you're on. it looks like some sort of creature has moved across. I don't know with a 14 that you would know what, um, other than it has four paws and it moves across the, the uh, path on, onward to the other side. Um, but nothing crazy. You don't hear anything uh, or anything of that nature until about halfway through your journey. We come upon this if it loads. Huh? There we go. And hold on, I need to turn Is that the a rock slide. No. No bridge. This, yes. So you're on your trail. Hold on, let me uh, edit the. Uh, this is gonna look weird for stream for a second here. Sorry, sorry, sorry. We're gonna mess everything up but I need to turn the music down for me. (laughs) This is getting too crazy. All right. There we go. All right. So (laughs) I made this map. I'm pretty proud of it. Um, But yeah, so you you come upon this trail. uh, Well, you're on this trail. And normally you see there's this really big river um, and you see that the bridge is just completely out. Move the screen for the stream there. Um, so, is the water still open or is it iced over? So it's not completely iced over. You do see that, or like along the edges where it's not moving quite as quickly, um, it is freezing or frozen. And then you also see that the water is actually moving not quickly, quickly, but it is moving um, pretty fast. And um, you see like these chunks of just ice just flowing down the river in fact you were looking at this and you don't even see um like chunks of the river in the um now there's no music i think <laughs> i turned it down too I much can hear it. you can hear it but i think stream I can hear it. stream probably can't hear it mm. and that might fix it um but you see um there's barely any even signs of what was a bridge here, uh, other than a couple poles still lingering on the edges of the river. So. Let's check it out. Okay. Uh, So you guys get closer and closer to like where this bridge is out. And I think um let's see probably who's i don't have the bar on so i don't know anybody's passive perceptions i should have written this uh, down. Passive? yes passive perception passive perception is a 15. okay so you would definitely I have a 10. <laughs> You're too busy, uh, Luna, being cold that you really, I mean, you notice the bridge is out because that's kind of obvious. I was going to investigate the poles. <laughs> I was like focusing on the, on it. Okay. <laughs> Kylie, the lighting effects on this map are so cool. <laughs> Thanks. I have to say it. 
Uh, Ariel, what? Ariel and Rowan, what are your passive perceptions? Let me write this down. I'm looking at eleven looking for that. Eleven for Ariel. Ten for Luna. Um, it should be in parentheses on your character sheet. Uh, well, I don't know actually. This yeah, one no. is. Oh, it's on... On, on, the, on the new on the new uh, new one is on the number next to the yeah the, of of the plus. Uh, it's eleven, uh, Rowan. But it's under skills. Yeah, right. Yeah, if you look at skills, it'll give you your pluses, and then on the right, it's got a little number. That's your your passive version. Oh, of that skill. that's my, okay. 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 So you guys, um, Prism in particular. You definitely see this, um, but you, it's hard, honestly, but even with a 15 and just your um, knowledge of the area or like the terrain that you're in and just being on alert this whole trek, you actually see across the way a wolf, a white wolf of um, who is pacing across the way here and almost the their eyes are like fixed on a point on your side of the river at us or at just our not, side not not at you it's at on your side of the river though a point right. kind of towards the um the left here so kind of towards this direction right right so- right Prism's beak will open and she'll kind of look at the companions and you'll hear a voice come out of it. That wolf's acting mighty strange. Something over here's got its attention. <laughs> and then her little beak will close. Around over here. And her little okay. beak will close again and she'll just make sort of uncomfortable uh, bird click clacks with her beak. Okay. And she starts looking sort of over here. In, uh, in this focusing, area. yeah, focusing on the wolf. Yeah, where's the, where's the wolf looking? Um, so first, Luna, uh, roll an investigation on these poles since you were like focused yes. in on this, and then um, Rowan, you roll a perception um, to s- or even investigation, whichever you would like, to s- see if you can figure out where the wolf is kind of focusing. Ooh, okay. Forty-two. So Luna, you're looking at these poles. And you get the sense that this didn't happen, like, naturally. Like, something had to have really destroyed this bridge. Either crash into it or... Um, because just the way that the the poles are kind of leaning down river, it gives the sense at first glance that, okay, maybe a strong current just pushed it and the bridge was dis- in disrepair. But as you're looking at it more, the bits that you do see of the remaining bridge that just doesn't quite add up to you. Um, so you think something more happened here, but unfortunately- Does, does with it look like, does it look like it could rip apart? Does it look, does it look like it got like cut maybe? It or? doesn't look like it was cut, more like, almost like something big crashed into it. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the pieces went down the river. But again, okay. it's hard to say what, but since this what? was a big bridge, you suspect it was something big. Um, with your 10, Rowan, it doesn't take that much to find this, um, because they are a tiny baby cub. Um, you actually see, oops, she should be right here. Around this rock down here, a cub kind of hiding behind the rock, whimpering, um, their eyes over towards the, um, the wolf across the way. And it just starts, when it sees you, it starts to growl at you as you guys get close. What do you do? I uh, look back at the Kenku. It's like, mm, not my purview. And just kind of slowly <laughs> back away from it. Okay. Uh, she'll sort of look at him and step forward, peek around the rock. Mm-hmm. Her little header will sort of tilt to one side in that sort of questioning way that birds do. And then um, she'll cast Speak with Animals. Okay. Um, She'll just kind of cast speak with animals and looking at the cub and then looking across the river. Is that your mama or your papa? 
and you don't get like a voice per se. Um, you kind of just get the essence of this creature's thought. And uh, so you kind of hear in your head like a confirmation. You hear um, love and warmth um, in when you motion in that direction and you you get the sense that yes, this this cub family and that uh, wolf across the way are family. Hmm. Um, so she's still, and at this point she's not speaking words. She's sort of making bird sounds to communicate mm -hmm. with this wolf. Um, and she'll sort of look at the cub and go, we might be able to help you cross. Do you want to come with us? And at first you see the cub is hesitant. So I need you to roll, um, roll persuasion, but roll with advantage because you are essentially speaking to it in its language mm -hmm. oh gosh is it control or alt that i do first? alt a alt. Alt. Thank, yeah. you. <laughs> thank you beautiful <Nice>. dice <laughs> yes so a one or a 17 <laughs> yeah good thing you had advantage because you rolled the one first <laughs> yeah <laughs> this is so. me i need all the advantage i can take <laughs> <laughs> so you do you still at first the cub is hesitant um, but being mm -hmm. young and impressionable, the the cub mm -hmm. very um, gingerly steps forward uh, towards you. Um, and mm -hmm. as you kind of get a little closer to this cub, the mm -hmm. wolf across the way just starts pacing back and forth more aggressively. Mm -hmm. um, hackles yeah. are raised. It's a little bit, um, it's, it's not sure what you're doing. Yeah. Uh, Prism will just kind of hold out a, an arm. And her arm is, it's sort of like both a wing and an arm. So there's feathers that kind of come down as though it's a wing, but then she has like a little hand at the end of it. And she'll just kind of uh, wrap the feathers around the cub um, to give it a little bit of warmth, shelter from the cold, and uh, look across the river and just kind of be like, it's okay. We'll help it cross. Um, okay. And just kind of gather the cub a little close, give it a little shelter, and then sort of look back at everyone else um and you'll just wait 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 Be before she turns i'm gonna prank prism i'm gonna cast a message and i'm, I'm oh, gonna no. point to her and, and and as she's trying to talk to the cub i'm gonna say like mm, burst looked uh look tasty <laughs> and she's gonna she's gonna hear that in her mind um okay so <laughs> roll roll a deception uh luna <laughs> And then I wanted this to be a contested roll, so Prism roll um, insight to see. I'm sure. Oh. <laughs> okay. Eleven. So you have to beat an eleven. Ah, uh, oh, oh, uh, you did. <laughs> she has big numbers. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> you do hear this voice in your head, um, and at first you're like, "What is that?" Birds don't eat. Or dogs don't eat birds, and then uh, you realize it's Luna. <laughs> <laughs> She'll look back over her shoulder at Luna. Luna, honestly, do you think that little trick is going to work on me? I studied with a wizard. <laughs> She's going to look back at the. I am the, a wizard. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. All right. So uh, your the ice flow in the river. Yes. How how heavy does that look? Uh, like, would we potentially be able to move from ice chunk to ice chunk across the river? Yes, you could. Um, obviously, it would be a little bit um, precarious because there, it's not. Mm -hmm. There are big gaps between the mm -hmm. water and or between ice um, chunks. That's the All word. Right. <laughs> mm. On this so side I'm gonna, of the river, I'm gonna start trying to jump. Sorry. You're going to start trying okay. to jump. Okay. Oh. Um, hold up, hold, wait, wait, right. just a second. Hold up, hold up. Before you jump, maybe I can make this a little safer. Okay. So are these posts on this side of the river still anchored? Uh, yes, they would still be anchored, but broken. So in top. my pack, I have block and tackle, grappling hooks, and rope. You can look up the inventory. It's all in there. Mm -hmm. mm. I can literally grapple a piece of ice that's floating tie it to the block and pull it close to shore 
and by oh. anchoring one block to another, we can build a nice bridge. It'll take about an hour or so. It would take Wait, time. Wanna... I, I can cast my mage hand and pull the rope, you know, a little far away, so it's like on the river, maybe? On the ice? Okay. Maybe tie it to so something want... on the... Yeah, I just need to th throw the grappling hook out to hook the edges of the ice and then use the block and tackle to pull them in. And then walk out on the next piece and throw it out and reel it in and keep tying it back to the tying it back to the post until we have a a, a floating bridge, kind of like a, a military pontoon bridge. Okay, I will cool. say if you and uh, Rowan, if you and Luna are working on this together, if Luna does cast uh, Mage Hand, it would half the time. So instead of okay. I'd say instead of an hour, maybe thirty minutes. Um, I think sure. you could probably get it done. Prism, Prism would also chi chime in hearing this idea. I oh. can cast uh, a cantrip that would help seal up the gaps between the ice blocks, make it a little less treacherous. I, I can cast Frostbite and get those all oh. sealed up for us. Mm. Make it a more stable crossing, perhaps. Okay. Well, there's a little nice bridge. There is like a wall or something. I cannot move the mansion, but I'm yes. fine. I'll put yes. it up here. <laughs> there is a wall um, because the um, river is actually uh, about two feet below you off of this cliff. Right. So mm -hmm. to get down onto the ice, I'm going to need everybody to make just a general acrobatics check to see if you mm -hmm. land on one a piece that of ice that isn't going to just crack with your weight if you land too heavily. Um, and to make sure you don't slip off into the river. So who I'm so let's guessing get, let's let's get the anchor rope set first so you have something okay. to hold on to. Ariel is just going going full steam. Going full steam, you're just gonna jump in? Yep. Okay, yep. some okay. acrobatics. Okay. Uh, not, not too bad. You're small. Oh, this is the wrong one. So you make it in. I'm just gonna drop you on the other side here. Ooh. I put a 16 on acrobatics. Oh no, Rowan. <laughs> so when I you're anchored the oh, rope, no. though. Yes. So, um, actually, since you have the rope, Rowan, roll again so you have advantage because you would have a little bit of assistance there. Um, but Luna, you you make it over pretty fine. Okay, it was not. <laughs> did you see the Did you see the seventeen flop? Uh huh. Yeah. Uh -huh. That was terrible. I know that feeling. <laughs> So you go ahead and you you try Rowan and you're using the rope. You're like, I got this. I've done the ice climbing, you know, trying to get good pieces of ice. I've done this before. Um, that overconfidence is your downfall and you end up crashing into the ice um, and start sliding off of the edge. OK, into the towards the river. I just pull myself back with the rope. I just yeah. pull myself back with the rope. Make a uh, dexterity saving throw to see if you do so well. <laughs> Jesus. Oh, no. Oh, no. So it bounced start... off the big one again. No. <laughs> so you start pulling yourself oh. back. You're you're grabbing on. Um, but no, you... No, won't help because I'm sliding. Dang it. So you do end up going clunk right in um, to the ice. Um, is So everybody else sees this happen. Um, let me pull up my thing. Uh, okay. So, okay. you will take 2d4 of cold damage as you drop into this fridge. Oh, and I rolled Ow. two fours. <laughs> oh. 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 <laughs> so, you take 8 uh, cold damage as you plunge into the water. Um, your armor and all of your stuff, including the package, you have the package, are now soaking oh, wet. No. Mm -hmm. um, oh, no. So, uh, does anybody do would anything? You, would I? Would you mm -hmm. say the package did what? Get wet? Yes, it's, mm. everything is now wet. Dang, okay. nothing I have. Ariel to stop will him sliding in. Dive for him and try to grab him. I'll and just pull help myself him back up. Stabilize it, at least. Okay, so with yeah, I'm just with, gonna pull myself back up. With Ariel's help, which is slight because he's 
a tiny fairy. Mm -hmm. um, you do manage to get yourself back out of the water and back onto um, the the first ice chunk, as it were. Oh, I didn't mean to move both mm. of you, but it's fine. Um, Prism, go. did you roll a yeah, check? Funny. There you go. Oh, for what? For the... Uh, yep. Are you jumping down? No. Uh, her spell goes 60 feet, so she was going to wait until things were a little more stable to go down, since she's okay. also taking care of the cup. Sounds uh, good. So the yeah, cub is with you. Kinda... Oh, boop. you're good. You're good. <laughs> I just want the cub to be close to you, so I know where. Yeah. Uh, where everything is. No, she is. figured she'd wait because she's gonna have to figure out how to get the cub across safely too. Okay. Um, so she's kind of just hanging out there, and it can go sixty feet. So until she needs to, she's not gonna move forward. Okay. So you guys begin uh, the formation of the of the ice bridge. Uh, Ariel, were you gonna say something? I was I was gonna cross before this while the, they were starting on it. Sure. So, um, do you have a fly speed as a? I do. Okay. 40. So, ah. I, I, but I'm hopping from okay. piece to piece. But if there's ever like I, I slip, the wings just sort of like bump me over. Mm -hmm. You're doing so, that like fairy flutter thing where you just hop. Land. Is this difficult to that I'm not flying basically? Uh-huh. <laughs> this is difficult terrain, Luna, as it is icy. I, I do have mobile, so I guess I can just, you know, cross it quite efficiently. Okay, well, you don't have an ice bridge quite yet, because this is happening a little bit before that. So, Ariel, you want to be on the other side? How far are you going? Yes. Okay, so... Uh, well, I'm going to try to get to the wolf. And... Okay, so just make... Offering um... a piece of jerky. Make an acrobatics check just to see if you do end up slipping and sliding. Um, and obviously okay. movement is half, so it takes you a little bit longer than normal to get all the way over. Uh, so I do... I have mobile. Oh, okay. So it's fine. Um, yeah. yeah. So you That's go ahead. Nine, so. <laughs> so you do slip a little bit, but again, your wings pop out and like you kind of balance yourself um but it's not the most graceful like anybody else watching um you hop across it's not like in your your home forest or wherever you hail from mm -hmm. it's it's a little bit more treacherous but you're having fun doing it you're like really into it mm -hmm. um and you do make it across the way i'm just pulling you so you're on the other side you can place yourself wherever mm -hmm. you would like but um so you do make it all the way across, just as um, Rowan and uh, Luna, with the help of Prism, kind of uh, get about. I'm going to put you guys, you have to use our imagination that there is ice behind you. Um, but I would say you guys are about here, um, where that would be about where, as far as the bridge has gotten by the time that Ariel has um, hopped across the the bridge, and at this point, uh, because you guys are kind of making a bit of noise, you know, uh, messing with the water. There's a lot of ripples happening as you pull these ice chunks to you. As um, mm -hmm. the you're forming this bridge, um, and uh, Rowan, whatever wreck the bridge is coming. Yes, and Rowan, you're kind of being a little bit affected by this cold too. You're shivering. You've tried to like get as much as warm as you could, um, but you're still technically wet, and uh, so keep that in mind. But as you guys sure. start doing this um, with, actually, please hold. Good. Let me, let me roll a stealth check here. Could Prism have used Produce Flame to kind of dry him off a little bit? Sure, I can say that. We can say okay. you did that before you started. Uh, mm -hmm. Just get the worst of the cold off of him. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, that's good. So you guys don't see anything, actually, until mm -hmm. it's pretty much on top of you. And Rowan, you notice it first because you're looking at the next ice chunk. So you're kind of looking into the water um, and just trying to throw your grappling hook 
um, with a little assistance from Luna to pull that ice chunk closer. Um, and you are the first to notice a large, um, oh. almost squid-like creature with big honking teeth. And it... Baby cracking. <laughs> and it comes right up to your ice bridge. And that will start initiative, so... Can I get Long something bloods. as it, as it emerges? I'm sorry? Say again? Can I cast something as it emerges from the water? Um, I would say no, because I think you guys are surprised with my 23 okay. stealth check, so... <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah. Perception's <laughs> <All right. laughs> not that high, no. <laughs> there we go, right. so... Yeah. And let's change the music to combat. <laughs> Prism is a bit distracted with the baby wolf. I'm trying to keep it from going down onto the ice floe. Oh boy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I have to add Mama Wolf would be in initiative too. <laughs> oh, I don't think your mage hand has initiative, does it? <laughs> no, it doesn't. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> there we go. All right. I can just get to my inventory. I'm actually here. gonna make. All right. Uh, equip. There we go. I'm trying to get this battle map pretty okay. centered for stream. So that's good thematically. That uh, kind of makes sense. Um. So let's begin, shall we? Um. So, Rowan, so my arm you, you see it come up on you underneath the water. My armor class isn't going to be as good as normal because you see I don't grab my shield off my pack. Instead, with mm -hmm. my um, shield arm, my right arm, I wrap it into the rope three times so that the rope's actually wrapped around my arm and grabbed in my hand. Unliver my ham hammer from the other side. And I'm gonna just call, run over, and try and whack this thing quickly. Mm -hmm. oh, I forgot to hit T. It's okay. There. I did now, but <laughs> that's okay. Um, I let me pull up his sheet. That does hit, so you do um seven damage. Um, but it's like barely any damage. Um. You, you know that your hit struck true, um, hit as normal, but the baby Kraken doesn't even seem phased. So hopefully that gives you some information. What else do you do? Let's see. Uh, we're level four. I can't remember. I got a second attack, correct? Yes. I think so, no, yeah. That's no, five. no, that's at five. That's at five. Yep. So um... bonus action. I will use the one of my superiority dice. Uh, okay. uh, where, which one is it? That, that one. I'm that going one. to draw on the map how far your ice is, so you guys can just tell oh. where how far you guys got with the ice. Did that do anything? It didn't fill it in. Fill it in, please. Yep. Solid. There you go. And That's superiority awesome. <laughs> dice are a D8, correct? I believe, uh, yeah. I think so. Did it, it didn't take one off. It should have. It posted it there, but it didn't take one off, and it didn't roll the D8. We'll, we'll, we'll roll the D8 right now. Okay. So. I have... Add an extra seven damage to it, mm -hmm. and it's got to make a DC 14 saving throw or get knocked 15 feet away from us. Okay. Cool. So let's see if it can do that. Oh, it didn't do it. All right, we'll do it this way. Saving throw, please. Hi, do the thing. I got it. It's good. <laughs> oh, it doesn't need to be blind. I'm sorry. 
Can I reveal that? It was a 15. Oh, here we go. There we go. <laughs> it was a 15. So it does. It's does, DC 14. Yep, it does so make it. manages it. to hold on. Mm -hmm. And again, it just seems like um, your, your hits and stuff aren't doing as much as you would like them to. Um, though you know that they're hitting true, if that makes sense. Um, do we still have the potions of healing that were? Yes. I, I everybody I should. Yeah, everybody should have one. Have mm -hmm. one. Yes, and it's a bonus action yeah, to drink them. To oh, use it, which is what I'm doing. And a pause. I forgot to mention this at the beginning of the stream. Um, uh, the um, everybody gets a point oh, of inspiration that. Now it, that they give to another now it it. player. Remember? That. Yeah, there you go. Um, but everybody has one point of inspiration they can give out to another player for role-playing, for good attacks, for whatever. So you guys are in charge of essentially DM inspiration. So if you don't give them out, then nobody gets inspiration. So it's on you, not on me. <laughs> yeah. Can I then say I would like to give it my inspiration to Rowan for the ice bridge idea because that's just so awesome. Sure. So now you... <laughs> really clever way to cross this river. You have uh, one inspiration, Rowan, and Kiersey's already given out hers, so everybody else, um, you know, do your thing. All right, so you try to push this Kraken away, this baby Kraken, who's really cute, if not terrifying, and, uh, <laughs> and you try to push it back, and it just, it's, you can tell, you know, if, if a baby Kraken had favored terrain, it would be the water. So <laughs> it really doesn't do much. <laughs> so I think that leads us to, and you take your potion, um, gaining almost all of your healing from the, um, like almost all your hit points from falling in the water back. And that leads us to Ariel. So you're across the way um, mm -hmm. near this wolf and the wolf, you were looking at the wolf and the wolf immediately mm -hmm. turns towards the water and just starts growling, mm -hmm. hackles completely raised. Like it was still, you know, on edge. Now it's even further on edge as it, uh, mm -hmm. and that kind of directs your attention to the baby Kraken. What do you do? Uh, does the wolf look like something that I could pick up? No. Theoretically? No, that's a large creature okay. and you are small. <laughs> okay. Um, in fact, yeah, since you're like, since you're so close to um, this wolf, um, mm -hmm. maybe make a nature check for me real quick and see if you find out anything else. Okay. Oop, uh, I hit the mic. That is a nine, so probably not. Not really, but you can tell at the very least that this wolf is larger than most wolves you've seen before. Okay. But that's about all you get. Mm. Um. So I am going to uh, move and then use a bonus action to dash. Okay. Move 80. So I'll fly over to that side right there. Oh. Okay. Did you make it? Wait, I I'm can't sorry. Because of the uh, the shore. Where did? Can you ping the it again for me? Sorry. Right of, yep. Okay, gotcha. Right yeah, there's the baby kraken. Unfortunately, there's a wall there. Um, I didn't want you guys to just jump yeah. into the river. Um. Fair okay. Enough. And then. Uh, would I be able to then uh, use my action to attack? Would I get wait, uh, because of the uh, the shore? The Where did, surprise can you attack ping it again for me? Sorry. Right of, yeah. Okay, gotcha. Or not the uh, surprise attack. Uh, what's it called? Sneak, Sneak attack. attack? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So I will. Oh, there is a little bit. I'm s apologies. There is a little echo on stream there for a second because it opened for some reason opened the YouTube video and had the sound playing. So <laughs> apologies to stream. Ooh. Yeah, good job. I so, am an oh. expert. <laughs> Putting my short sword at him. Hit with the mm -hmm. twenty. Oh, three damage. Wow. Um, wow. But then, 
to sneak attack. You did hit, though. That's good. Yeah. Uh, sneak attack okay. incoming. Mm -hmm. I'm watching. Does his uh, short sword piercing in do better effects than my hammer did? So all the damage is about what you would expect from uh, even your damage. It's, it's mm -hmm. what you would expect from attacking something um, with your weapons, but it just doesn't seem to phase the baby Kraken at all. Um, I think also, the animation of sneak attack doesn't work very nice, so you have to roll it manually. Yeah. yeah. Also, just roll again with advantage because you are across the way from Rowan. So just roll another d20, see if it's a natural 20 or not. Okay. Um, because you rolled a 19. Yep. Earlier. Okay. Just double checking. Um, because you are and flanking. Three, three sneak attack damage. All right. Let me. I'm in the three wrong. Wow. Just about as low mm -hmm. as you could possibly roll, my friend. <laughs> yep. <laughs> oh my gosh. It did not apply this damage. Apply that. Please. It does not want to apply anything. It's probably because this monster is, uh, you know, <laughs> custom. I custom made this one. Um, so, okay. Good. So is that the end of your turn? That is the end of my turn. All right. So you, you fly over across the river and get behind um, this baby kraken um, using Rowan's attacks to kind of... Um, make using that to your advantage as it's uh kind of focused on um rowan and you do end up piercing it a couple times the damage though doesn't seem to phase it at all um and uh not only because your damage is not very uh high but also it just it just doesn't even think that it's like it's like a bug it's like if a a, a fly came behind it and just was started mm -hmm. to buzz around. That's kind of the impression you get after uh, you finish attacking. Um, next is Mama Wolf, and she sees uh, that this is happening. I know it has a red circle. For the purposes of this, she is uh, not necessarily against you, um, but she is going to... Um, it's hard to get in position for her. So she's going to spend her turn trying to get into the water. At first, she's you just watch mm. it. She's pacing, pacing back and forth. Um, but she see has seen kind of what you guys are doing with the ice chunks. And she's kind of intelligent, actually, for, for a creature. Um, so she's going to jump down into the water. Um, so we'll just make just a general acrobatics check to see how well this goes. <laughs> okay. So she jumps down into the water um, pretty easily. Uh, she is, a, you know, used to this kind of terrain, although not necessarily being on the river, um, especially in this, this bitter cold. And then she's going to try to leap to this ice chunk here, which for the purposes of this, this is what it will look like. So you have about a 10 foot gap between this ice chunk here and then another 10 foot gap between this and the edge of the river. So she is going to uh, make another acrobatics check just to see if she can leap here. Oof, that's a little bit more rough. So we're going to just do a deck save and see if she falls into the river. <laughs> Oh, no. She does not. So she does manage to hold on, um, jumps and lands on this, though, starts sliding a little bit and has to like, you just hear the, the claws raking um, the, uh, the ice as she moves forward. I also need, um, I forgot to do this, not Ariel, but Rowan, I just need you to roll just a an acrobatics check um, to... Well, we'll just do it next time. Um, but we're everybody who's on ice at the start of your turn, you have to roll a dex saving. Well, uh, an acrobatics check to see if you stay on the ice as you're moving. <laughs> so just moving forward, remind me. Um, but sure. that is going to be all that she can really do from here, I think. Let's see. How. Please hold. Yeah, 5, 10, 15. Yep, okay. So that's all she can do. And she's just 
trying to get closer, but not sure like how to, to go about tacking something that's in the water. This is not a hunt that she is used to. All right. Yeah. Luna. Um, can I yell out something between turns? Sure. Yeah, I just want to yell out, go ahead and just get across. I'll hold it here. Okay. That's it. I just wanted to yell that out. <laughs> sure. Luna, you're up. Okay, so this uh, ice bridge that we have built, this is the only stable part to be standing on, or...? Um, I would say you see this ice chunk over here and this one. Right. Um, you could probably hop on those. This is actually, while, I mean, I think it kind of looks like an ice chunk on here, but it's actually uh, a little bit of land that is sticking up out of the river, but it is also yeah. covered in ice and is slick because it's been covered in water over time. So, like, this and does the, this... stick out. All this area, what is this then? Just water? Water. Or... Yep, that's just water. Okay, okay. So just for the purposes of this, any of these like dark blue things, those are the ice chunks you would be able to hop onto. Or the land. Right or here. the land, yes. There's land there. And this one I'm... also looks like land over here. You see, you see a rock sticking up. I guess I'm going to go to the land area. And as I am moving, I'm going to unsheath my blade. But I am casting Shadow Blade, so mm -hmm. what I what I unsheathe is actually a glowy, a dark glowy weapon. Mm -hmm. Let me see. The automation should work. There we go. Okay, and then I'm going to attack the thing. I mean, I'm gonna do booming blade just because, but it, it, I don't think it's gonna move. Mm -hmm. But I'm still going to use it. Sure. Going to four, the Shadow Blade, and the attack goes. Oh, nice. Hey. Ooh. Very nice. There you go. 16 psychic damage. Ooh. Nice, nice. So it does do quite a bit of damage. And um, because you've done a substantial amount, it does kind of turn um, to you. And you see that this, this baby Kraken's eyes are just red and they flare as you you hit it and it turns its sights on you Yikes. i'll try to taunt it then I'll I'll, I'll I'll move back you know uh, just a tiny bit right here I'm gonna be like come at me <laughs> <laughs> okay and i need you to since you're moving on the ice just make an acrobatics check to see if you fall as you're moving but, across but the you, ice. since i have mobile oh, have i mobile. don't have a you're right okay. you got it I forgot about mobile. Ah, mobile, <laughs> mobile, mobile. So I also don't trigger attack opportunity. I just mm -hmm. uh, come at me. Come at yep. me, bro. And that will be my turn. Okay. All right. That leaves us to Prism. So you see okay, everybody's prison. jumping and moving towards this Kraken. You watch Luna bounce back away from it. What do you do? All right. So Prism is going to, this is definitely within range, good. Mm -hmm. uh, she's going to try to scoot the baby wolf behind her mm -hmm. to kind of protect it. And then uh, she's going to cast, um, you'll hear her sort of muttering to herself and picking up uh, as she scoots the baby wolf behind her, she'll pick three little rocks out of her belt pouch. These are her sling bullets. Mm -hmm. And she's going to cast Magic Stone. Um, okay. And this is a cantrip, mm -hmm. and it's going to allow her to chuck these uh, as an action to attack mm -hmm. this thing. Yep, so technically and... it's a magical weapon, because it's a magic yeah. stone. <laughs> so it lets me do a d6 plus spellcasting and attack using my spellcasting modifier instead. So okay. uh, let spell. me see, I'm going to have to... It's telling me my target is blocked by a wall. Oh, but. because here, I'm just going to, for the purposes of this, drop you in the water because there's a wall there. Yes. Yeah, I'm in the wrong thing. I'm trying. But well, you're still on the, you're still up here. So just keep that in mind. <laughs> uh, all right. So magic stone. Uh, that is. Okay. I will just roll a d20 plus my spellcasting modifier because it keeps telling me that's not. 
Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Uh, oh. <laughs> there we go. All right. Ooh. 19. That's does good. That hit? Yes, it does hit. Okay. All right, and then we're gonna do one d six plus. Uh. Ooh. Wow. Five. Yikes. Uh. That's eight points of damage. Okay. Um, she flings one of these little magic pebbles that is kind of uh, sort of circled in this little pale blackish green energy. All right, so you do that, um, and it does hit the the kraken. Um, but again, mm -hmm. like you know that it hit for the proper amount of you know force um, mm -hmm. and all of that, but the kraken just doesn't seem phased. And it still seems to have its eyes set on Luna, who has so far done the mm -hmm. most damage um, in yeah. one hit. So, <laughs> Okay, she's going to look down at the baby wolf, look over at the mama wolf, and start to uh, change her body position. Okay. Um, she's going to do something else her next turn. Okay. She's shifting tactics. Sounds good. Um, so that will be the end of your turn. Um, now it's baby Kraken's turn. I'm excited. Brighton, my husband's in the room now. Um, and he just smiled at me like, <laughs> he knows, <laughs> he knows. Um, okay. You so, love baby Kraken. Mm -hmm. uh, it's cute. Um, you know, even with all, the, all of its teeth. Um, <laughs> so it's going to do, let's see. A multi attack. Um, how far away are you? Five, ten. You're still. Yeah, you're still in range, Luna, of its oh, no. big, big tentacles. So it doesn't even have to move. Um, Unlucky. So, <laughs> it can make three tentacle attacks with a multi attack. So it's going to give one to each of you. It's going to start. Actually, no. It's a baby. And. Its focus is on Luna, so it's gonna try to attack you with all three, Luna. <laughs> okay. You did the most damage, so. <laughs> uh, so a tentacle attack. Let me make sure you're targeted. I hopefully I set this up um, correctly. We'll see. Uh, it did uh, not. It might think you're too. On. It's because I am poking oh, okay. you. I gotcha. Perfect. So the first one, it tries to attack you um, with its first swipe, and it doesn't. It just doesn't hit. Um, you almost you're you kind of flail some or f flare some magic, and it kind of just deflects that uh, the tentacle. And you see the little sucker, um, almost octopus like suckers on its on its tentacle try to like. Um, suction cup to the shield to you essentially um but it didn't work so it attacks again what, what why don't you come closer <laughs> and it misses again because <laughs> of your shield and then we'll try one more time oh no uh so the yeah, first two be... didn't didn't work it goes and tries to to grapple or grapple you with its suckers um and then it ends up uh let's see do 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 yes. it looks like the damage is not being automated yeah again this is like a custom guy so take nine uh what kind of damage eh, let me see i think it's bludgeoning mm -hmm. yes sense. nine bludgeoning da damage as it like slant that third tentacle slams into you um almost pushing you off of the um uh ice but not and the dc is actually 14 did you, what did you roll yeah i didn't set this up correctly and it's not supposed to be constitution sorry you're gonna have to roll a, a... well it's because i am concentrating so i guess that's my automatic oh, okay um... i gotcha, gotcha um so you are now considered grappled um Ooh. And then at the start of your turn, you'll be able to make a strength saving throw to see if you can break that grapple. But this tentacle okay. smacks into you, wraps around your body, and you can feel the suction cups just adhering um, to you. So you are 
grappled and considered restrained until the grapple ends. So, I think Somebody that's all. Shows. Yeah. I was looking to, but grappled. Oh. I don't. There you go. Is it alphabetical? There you go. Yeah. I think so. Restrained. There you go. All right. I have all the icons on my. I, mean, I can't even see myself. I know anymore. you can't even see your, <laughs> your token. Your token's so small. That's like, yeah. Uh, yeah. All right, In and that society, there's like. <laughs> yep. That will end the baby Kraken's turn. So Rowan, you're back up at the top of the round. Do is so this tentacle is reached out across and grappled Luna from a. Yes. So it, it's kind of stretched out between me and Luna, right? Yeah, it is. I could draw a like line, these. but yeah, like that. Oh, it's yeah. wrapped around. <laughs> yep. And this is this spot here. This this all here is um, ground, correct? Yes, but it is icy still. So you, it's still um, difficult terrain, and it would still um, require a acrobatics check to make sure you don't slip off into icy water. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to go ahead and um, put away my hammer and grab the shield because, okay. again, I still have the rope wrapped around my right arm. Okay. And then I dive over the tentacle. Onto the land? Yep. Okay. So just make a general acrobatics check to see if you fall off horribly again. <laughs> Oops, I'm in the wrong thing. There you go. Uh, the idea is to be flat on my stomach. I dive over it. Oh, okay. All right. So no problem. You do, with, and you have the rope, so technically this would be with advantage since you have a little bit of assistance, but for, you don't have to roll again. You definitely um, manage to jump over the... Jump. Uh, yep. Now I'm flat on my stomach. Yes. Dig my heels in and push myself back to the original going under the tentacle. Okay, with the rope. Rope's still attached to my arm, yeah. Okay, perfect. Just trying to follow what you're doing. <laughs> and I start backing up, yanking on the tentacle. Okay, um, let's... Hmm. I think hey, sorry, I... I don't know why my, my, my HP didn't change. I'm still full. Uh... Um... Yeah, I had to manually change mine. I'm gonna, I'm gonna apply the damage on my tune. Okay. Yeah, I had, to, I had to manually change mine. So the idea is I just want to wrap, I get, get this wrap rope wrapped around that tentacle and pulled tight. So mm -hmm. if it tries to pull Luna in, I can pull back with my strength. Okay, so if that happens, we'll make like a contested strength roll at that point. Um, That's how I'm going to end my turn with, the, with um, holding my action to yank the tentacle back if it tries to draw Luna in. Okay, perfect. And, so, I, and I'm back up to my full armor class because I got my shield in my other hand now. All right. What was that roll? Oh. Concentration. Wait, wait, did I... I don't know. Roll another concentration just now? I'm not sure. And it dropped, it dropped my... my uh... I already did the concentration, so I'm going to just cast the, the thing again. Yeah, just do it again. Yeah, I don't know why it prompted you to do that again. So just recast it and don't use yep. a spell slot, you know. Mm -hmm. There you go. Perfect. So Ariel, it is your turn. You're muted. <laughs> Thinking back to when I, I saw the pump up with Prism, uh, mm -hmm. would I think that I would be able to lift that? Um, it's yeah, a pup. it's a puppy. Yes. Okay. I'm going to use my bonus action to disengage. Mm -hmm. I'm going to fly over to... You don't have to. You have mobile, uh, don't you? Uh, I would have to attack. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Yeah. Uh, and I want to use my action to pick up the, the pup. Sure. Uh, sort of like put my arms under its front legs and hook my heels underneath its rear legs. Sure. And then start flying across the river. Okay. Uh, so I'd be able to be That's... 35 to get there. And then I would be able to get up to 
the edge. I would be able to get there with the pup okay. underneath me. So we're going to put you like right here just because. Mm -hmm. okay. And just pretend the puppy is with you. I'll just move it as we go, but technically in the same square as you. Mm -hmm. um, all right. Anything and else? And that is my turn. All right. Uh, that leads us to Mama Wolf. Um, let's see. What would she do? So she's going to have to leap over the, to this section here, trying to get kind of close to you, um, actually. Oops, other way. That way. To face the Kraken. Um, so she... She's a for that. <laughs> She needs to roll a dex check to see if she makes it without falling into the water. She does. And so she is going to um, kind of row, row and make, make just a general like insight um, check to see if you um, understand the kind of growl bark it does towards you. Nope, you don't understand what she's trying to tell you to do. So <laughs> she's going to go ahead and just unleash some motherly fury. Um, if we can do it. Use. And she's going to blast it with a cold breath. Oh, oh I didn't target, did I? Interesting. Oh, it did. Uh, Why did it make? Yeah. Target is... yeah. Okay. The, the, it, it, the, these kinds <laughs> of decks don't need a target. It's like an area of effect. Oh yeah, I guess that's true. And it thinks it attacked the wolf, which is not quite right either. But it's fine. Um, the baby kraken does, or yeah, the baby kraken does make the save, but it still hurts. And frost um, covers the kraken, and you do think that it's not like particularly more effective, but you can tell that. This Kraken is not necessarily resistant to cold. So maybe it's not really from around here. You get that sense. Um, so mm. cold damage to baby Kraken. Yep, that was applied. Just double checking. All right. And um, I think if... Uh, oh, technically he had advantage. Well, no, not on cold breath. Um, okay. That's good. That's it for Mama Wolf. Um, also, though, do you still have... Um, I'm sorry, Prism. Do you still have your Speak With Animals up? No, okay. that, that goes away after 10 minutes. Okay. So if uh, it's been longer than 10 minutes, it's gone. Okay, I would say it's definitely been at least 15, because that would be how long it took you guys to make half of a bridge. Um, so it would be I gone by now. Mm -hmm. I figured it was gone by now. Yeah, and just Did you say that I had to do it? Sorry, sorry. Um, also, Prism, just make a general insight roll to see if you can catch what the winter wolf is, just because of your druidic nature and your, mm -hmm. you've been watching the pup and trying to make sure um, they get reunited. Oh. That's a 20 for 25. Nice. So you you know a lot of animals. Um, you might not be the most familiar with wolves per se, but it's not like you haven't encountered them. You haven't tried to study as many different shapes as you can. Um, so you do get the sense that um, this wolf is not only panicked because of her mm -hmm. cub, but there's an underlying sense of... Um, urgency in her movements mm -hmm. and she yips kind of at Rowan and you get the sense that she is taking his place he uh he had mentioned that he was going to distract it um sh mm -hmm. she kind of yips at him to say I got this and mm -hmm. is almost kind of encouraging him to move on but you also notice because of your insight um, was a natural 20. You noticed that Rowan did not gather that information either. Mm -hmm. All right. So that leads us to Luna. Luna, you are grappled, but you can make a 
strength saving throw, I'll have to beat a 14 to break Wait, it. Wait, do I have to do that at the beginning or at the end of my turn? Beginning. Do it at the beginning of your turn. Um, unless you want to stay grappled for some reason. No, no, no. It's just <laughs> just checking. Uh, what, what, sorry, what kind of roll do I have to make? Strength saving throw. Oh, this is going to be bad. <laughs> and, and, and I have a minus point, one on that. One... Oh. Okay. 15. All right. At yep. this point, is that where I would yank on the rope to help um, Luna out? Well, he's the Kraken hasn't tried to pull the... Um, gotcha. Gotcha. I'm, trying, I'm trying to free myself. Yep. Yeah, he's trying to. She's trying to break yep. free, um, and your action was gotcha. triggered when the uh, kraken pulled, so it hasn't done that. But Luna, you beat the DC of fourteen, so you do end up just breaking free. So you are no longer restrained and or grappled. So let's change that on your character sheet here. Um, you are now free. I can There's... see myself. <laughs> you do not have a tentacle wrapped around you, though it's still technically extended um, as it's still s- starting to pull back towards um, itself, and it hasn't done that yet. Um, so go ahead. How, how how does the Kraken look? Like, it's still, like... Do, does it seem like it's totally still full, fully invigorated or does yes. it look any, any hurt at all? It does not look like you can see where, you know, the members of your party have started to, you know, slash into it. Um, but you're looking mm. at it and those ones haven't like healed up or anything, but they're barely even bleeding. It just doesn't seem to be really affected even by your, um, your more magical, um, imbued, attack with your booming blade right. uh it it did the proper amount of damage you think but it's still just not phased it doesn't seem like you've even put a dent really into it so i guess i'm gonna start singing to get a little extra okay because my my plates on on mm-hmm. and i'm gonna get close again what kind of song do you sing <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, like, a, okay, a song of ice and fire. <laughs> oh, there you go. <laughs> so you guys hear Luna start um, this rhythmic chanting. You've heard it before. Um, I'm assuming you guys have traveled at least uh, a little bit together in the past. So you've heard and seen her use these abilities before. But um, it's very nice. Uh, seems to almost fit with the the arctic theme but also has a little bit of a punch to it <laughs> all right i'm gonna do the booming blade again and i'm gonna move farther away this time <laughs> okay uh let's see what is it da, 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 da. booming blade all righty 19. yep does oh, hit only, only wow. seven damage this time and then I'm going to move back about here mm-hmm. and see uh, if it follows. Yeah. Yep. Let's erase that. Ten- well, the tentacle's still there, I guess, until its turn. OK, anything else? No, that's a bonus action and action. Perfect. So that leaves us to Prism. All right. So seeing all of this, Prism is going to shout to Rowan. Rowan, get out of there. She's trying to keep you, or she's trying to get you out of the way. Let, c- cross I'll the shout water. Back. I'll shout back. Yeah, I'm waiting till you get across, like I said. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Stubborn dwarf. Got it. Prism's going to be like. <sighs> and then she's going to look up at Ariel, who's got the cub. Mm-hmm. And I'm assuming this is a little comical because, I mean, wolf cubs aren't that small and Ariel's <laughs> also only like two feet tall. Mm-hmm. Um, and she's going to be like, I want a salad. And then she's going to uh, wild shape. Okay. And uh, she will wild shape into her uh, reindeer form. Okay. Nice, nice, nice. And wow, that just got really weird on me. Well, now you're really big. Because it's a large reindeer. Yeah. <laughs> I can't see anybody. Hang on. I think the game. You might have to I refresh. Might... Yeah, yeah, I've got to refresh my side. Um... Nope. 
just telling me I don't own any tokens with vision in the scene, but that's fine. Um, so let she's me... going to wild shape into the reindeer, and she's going to um, kind of snort and paw at the ground, looking up at Ariel, and like shake her antlers, like, get on. And then she's going to kind of slide down the bank to get onto the water. Um, now do you have vision? Or, or like, out on the... Yes, I do. Okay. <laughs> yep. and so she'll sort of like do that thing that reindeer do when they're going down a bank where she kind of set, sits back on her haunches with her feet forward and kind of slides her, her way down to the mm-hmm. river's edge. Um, and she's going to kind of head out to get into the water and kind of give Ariel a look like, get over here and get on my back or above me so that at least you and the cub are somewhat protected. Okay. And then she's going to head off uh, this direction into the water to kind of go further away from the Kraken and the bubbles sort of thing. She's All heading right. to the, the ice block here. I would say also yeah. because you are um, a reindeer and you are used to mm. the cold, um, you do not have to make um, like the, the cold water, like it does kind of penetrate your, your coat a little bit but it doesn't do mm-hmm. damage um, like it would have if you were not in this shape. So for you, the cold <laughs> yeah. damage and all of that is negated um, mm-hmm. due to your resistance and your life in the cold tundra as a reindeer. <laughs> Lovely guard hair. It works. Mm-hmm. But she doesn't have a swim is, speed, so that's about as far as I think she would get this turn. Mm-hmm. So, Is Ariel and the wolf cub on her back? Um, they Still are in the air at the moment. Yeah, they are in the air, um, up, like above oh. the river. So they would have to use their turn to get onto the reindeer. Mm-hmm. She's mostly trying to use herself as kind of like a lifeboat, so that if he's flying over her with the cub, if he or the cub get knocked out of the air or something, they'll land on her back. Is essentially what she's trying to get get communicated through to him. So. All right. And that's all she can do, because she's now a reindeer. It's Baby Kraken's turn. All right. Baby Kraken sees you move away, Luna. You didn't do as much damage um, this last turn, though you did try to taunt it. Let me just roll. Uh, Yeah, but the wolf did do a lot of damage, didn't it? Yeah. So it's going to actually go after the wolf now. So um, because that seems like the biggest threat. Actually, no. You know what? This baby, this baby Kraken, you know, it was asleep for a while until you guys uh, so rudely woke it up by creating a icy bridge in its its new domain. So it's kind of hungry and it's going to go for a light snack, so it's going to try to attack you, Rowan, which I'm going to move the wolf slightly so I can target <laughs> and all of that correctly. Um, so it's going to try to make oh, a multi-attack, so three tentacles come lashing out, and the one um, that you have the rope uh, attached to, Rowan, that one doesn't move. It has other tentacles, so it pulls out some of its other tentacles and starts slapping them in your direction. Um, It might ask you to make a con save. I think it has... I took an attack that um, had, like, poison attached to it, and I don't think I got rid of that, so just pretend that that doesn't exist. (laughs) So, uh... So it is going to attack you. So the first one does hit um, and wraps around you, uh, Rowan. So you are now restrained and uh, grappled. So let me put those on for you. Okay. Let me just do this real fast. Perfect. So... You are restrained, and what is this? Twenty-one. It was his role uh, answer up to the attack. Oh, you're muted, Drake. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I ch- 
All I did was I I took ten damage, so I changed my oh, okay. uh, armor class. What what is the? I don't know what the twenty one is. You, oh, you, it you, asked it, me it, to do the Constitution saving throw. Yeah, yeah you. Said oh that. yeah, just ignore yeah. that. That doesn't that doesn't count. Okay. Um. So if I didn't roll it. Yep. Um, your armor class is twenty one, though, right? The armor class is okay. twenty one because I put the shield back on. Yes, correct. Perfect. Just making sure. So yeah, so you do take the ten damage as this tentacle wraps around you and suckers you in, in place, it. and then it's going to still keep smacking you with tentacles, um, because it's a baby kraken. It doesn't really know what it's doing. The first one misses, this or, or the second one misses, and the third one misses because you're already grappled. But it had shot all three tentacles out almost at one time, just hoping one of them would catch. So you are now grappled. Um, you still technically have the rope because it's wrapped around your arm that is holding a second tentacle, but I will draw this one out a little bit just so everybody can see it. Maybe. Here you go. So, it's a tentacle. There you go. It's wrapped around you like a lasso. And then at the start of your turn, which is next, you can make a strength saving throw, DC 14, to see if you can break this grapple. So I will definitely let go of the, uh, would it be strength or athletics? It's strength. So right. I will let go of this, uh, rope and, uh, grab that tentacle and rip it off me real quick. Sure. Are you um, going to hold on to the tentacle or let the tentacle go? Cause with a, with that, you, I could even say you, good. you rip it off and you can have it in your hands if that's something you want. No, no, okay. I'm going to I'm going to let it go. Okay. Um at this point then I will go ahead and grab the hammer and smack it. Okay. Do you hit? But but we're going to throw this not that one, this one in with it to use the ability to push so knock it back it adds another eight to the damage okay i'll subtract to make a dc 14. all right strength saving throw 14 right so it did not make it so it does end up pushing it back uh do you want to move the full 15 feet yes okay so 5 10 15 so it goes way back here um so you guys watch as rowan um gets grappled by this uh tentacle and then bursts out pulls out his warhammer and slams it into the um the almost the like torso of this this kraken and it pushes it back 15 feet the tentacles would go with it so we will just erase nope well we might erase them we will just erase that as they go with it uh, into the distance. All right. Anything else, Rowan? Grabbing the rope would be a, grabbing the rope would be a free action. Yeah. Because remember, yeah. I let go of it. Mm -hmm. So I grab the end of the rope, and then five. So that's ten. I get to here, mm -hmm. and then try and leap across to the next piece. Sure. Make an acrobatics check um, to see if you make it. <laughs> And because the terrain is icy. Yep. So you make it. Just barely. So you kind of slide a little bit. Um, but you, you make it and firm. I'll stop my movement there. All I'll right. Stop my movement there. It was double um, because it's difficult terrain. Did you consider that? How far did exactly. you Exactly. Okay. Yep. Five. Yep. yep. So I went 10. Yep. 20. Five. <laughs> you got it. Okay. That's that, it. That leads us to our little fairy friend. Okay. Um, I am going to bonus action dash, mm -hmm. uh, drop the wolf pup on the edge of the river there, and then be able to move five feet back over to the river. Okay. So you do that. Awesome. Uh, so I'm just this flies across and you're going to be here yeah right okay there. perfect yep. 
Awesome. All right. So the baby wolf is across and now you see it kind of hunkers down, um, but it's whimpering. You know, it's mama still in the fight. Mm-hmm. Um, so it is still. Uh, it's not going to run away, per se. You get that sense. And uh, mm-hmm. anything else on your turn? That is it. All righty. That leads us to Mama Wolf. So she um, watches as this teeny tiny fairy carries her puppy across the river. And as soon as you set that puppy down, the wolf cries out uh, a long howl um, that seems to echo off of the walls, off of the of the cavern or uh, the cliffs. Sorry, not cavern. The cliffs. And it echoes off of the ice and it just... Um, it almost gives you this sense of um, vigor or like makes you kind of feel more bold, I guess. Uh, and the so I would like to award everybody a uh, inspiration for completing this, except for you, Rowan, because you still have your inspiration from Kiersey. And then... I was worried I would need that to stay on my feet. <laughs> <laughs> um, but at the end of the cry from the wolf, you see on the other edge, uh, one, two, three, four. And let me uh, turn them to face the other way because that would make more sense. Oh, maybe I can. E- Oh god. There you go. I think you can select them all with tape gallery, but Yeah, I got it. <laughs> all right. So they a full, uh, a full pack of wolves now arrives on the other side of the river. Um let me They will move on. Actually, they would move on uh the mama wolf's turn, so that would be this turn. Um so she she can't necessarily reach from here, so she would move forward onto this icy um, little patch of land in the ocean. Um, she doesn't have to get that close, and she will... Let's see if she gets this back, though. Uh, so a D6 for her. Just one of them. She did not, so she can't really bite it from here. Um, so it would just stay. But these other wolves, um, and they uh, pass by you, Ariel, and it's almost, um, you're just, you're a little bit glad that they're not coming after you. Let's just say it that way. Um, And they all jump into the water. So I'm just going to make one check with them so I'm not rolling 8 million Mm -hmm. times um, to see if they make it. They do. So they jump into the river and then start moving across um, to get to the Kraken. So we're just going to do this. They have a lot of movement, actually. 5, 10, 15, 20. So, yeah. So, like, actually, I think that one would go here near you, Rowan. So, Rowan, two big, honking, beautiful, but large wolves jump onto your icicle, making it wobble slightly. Um, But it's okay. You don't fall or anything. Um, You kind of, you see them coming. They're not trying to be stealthy in this moment. They're here to help this other wolf out. So, um, but they jump onto your thing um, and stop there. Um, And that will be the end of the wolf's turn. So that leads us to Luna. Okay. I'm going to, if I measure this group, it's like 10 to here. Mm -hmm. 20 all the way here. So I'm gonna move right there. Okay. Do another attack. Why do I let lose my there it is? Spell. Oh, unlucky. Ooh. 
but I still attack so I can I can still move without triggering attack of opportunity. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to see uh so small uh 15, 20. I guess I can reach the the ice. Yeah, you should with be the remaining of my movement. Mm -hmm. So I'm just gonna be right here. Then make an acrobatics check just to see that you make it to where you want to. Uh sure. Uh, well, you have mobile, mm. so it doesn't matter because do. it's not difficult terrain or anything. Yeah, I would say. Right. I say still roll it because there are now three, now a fourth person on this little spit of ice. <laughs> and <laughs> it's get, it was wobbly when the two wolves jumped on. And yeah, you don't weigh a lot, but it is added weight. So just roll. Um, both with advantage, just because you are mobile, you can you can make it. Um, but I just want to see if this many uh, creatures on this little blob of ice does anything. Funny. All right, so you make it, no problem. You almost, you don't even rock this little chunk of ice, not even a little bit as you land. You're just delicate, you land softly. Um, all right. What, what? Uh, what's the, the lighting right now? What, what time is it on the day? It's about like the middle of the day, so. Okay, so we, it's sunny. No, yeah, it's sunny. It's fine. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're good. That's my turn. All right. <laughs> that leads us to our reindeer friend, Prism. <laughs> All right. Prism's going to go as far as she can in the water um, since her speed's going to be half since she's swimming. Mm -hmm. um, and she's going to head straight over towards the, the shoreline at this point. Okay, do you form. do you dash? You can also take the dash action if you're... All right, I can dash. So, yeah, so then I will go... Just a quick question. How does the uh, inspiration work? So you can roll... Uh, yeah, it's a free reroll, a free advantage, essentially. And you can only oh, hold... I reroll my attack. We can retcon it if you want. We can go back. Do you want to? Yeah, sure. I'll sure. just delete it, re-roll on the attack. Um, yeah. Just to see if I see it. Let me back up. Sorry, Kirsty. <laughs> no, you're just... fine. Yeah, just see. Yeah, it does hit go. that time. There you go. Oh, wow. Minimum damage. <laughs> yeah. But still, Two ones. still some damage. All right. Yeah, it still branded the Blade. All right, that's it. Thank you. Okay, no yeah. worries. That's All right, awesome. so back to um, Prism, which, by the way, Adam is in the chat, and he goes, does that make her Dasher? Because you're a reindeer. <laughs> <laughs> of course he did, of course. Uh, <laughs> I mean, he gave me such nice. a hard time about the muskox. He has to do, to do something because of the reindeer. <laughs> yep, yep. All right, so you spent your action oh dashing as Dasher. Mm -hmm. um, anything else you want to do? Yep. Uh, nope, that's all she's got in Wild Shape. She's just, uh, thankfully she keeps her own intellect when she's, uh, in Wild Shape, because a reindeer would be quite spooked by this many wolves, but yes, she's good. So she's heading for sure where she can Wild Shape back, having made the crossing safely. Um, all right. And then she can start helping in the fight, so. Her goal is to get to shore. That leads us to Baby Kraken. Uh, she's so. finally going to move. It is. So now, now it sees um, a whole pack of wolves. It is still a baby kraken, and it is a little bit intimidated despite being pretty confident in its abilities. Um, so it is now going to retreat. So it is going to try to move. We'll see if it works. Um, let's see. How, how much is its movement? Its swim speed. Oh, it's it's fast. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 30. So it can move all the way over here. Um, but I think it has to roll. Yep, it's moving willingly. So there we go. There Extra we go. damage. <laughs> yep. So you watch as it starts to move away and just the crackle of uh, lightning or like a spark goes across the tentacles of this creature. Um, Luna, you notice that it actually seems to do a little extra damage than you typically see. Um, because right. it is thunder damage. And but it does if still we have known that before. <laughs> it does still move away um from the group, and that will be it'll actually um spend its action to dash. So 
it will probably make it all the way back to, yeah, like way over here. Swimming around the icicles and you watch it. It's very squid-like as it slides around. Um, and so, don't come back. <laughs> so for the purposes of this, unless any of you are pursuing, are you guys going to pursue? No. Okay. So nope. since nobody is pursuing, we will end combat there. Um, uh, too bad because I love this sound. <laughs> <laughs> um, so let's go back to my Arctic playlist. Hold on. Did it go? No? Yes? Oh, it's playing two songs at the same time. Let's not do that. Play one. Oh. There we go. <laughs> All right. So um, you guys do uh, successfully thwart the, the um, Kraken, and or at least deter the Kraken with your Wolven pack friends. And they, um, they don't give chase. They would rather not... Uh, fight in the water as they are not creatures who would do that um but they do end up um all kind of uh regrouping on the other side of the river the side that you guys were trying to get across i'm in the wrong thing um so they would all regroup over here um and they would start to turn tail um as a group just completely you know, ignoring you, they're going to start moving through the forest and as, or through the mountains. And as they do so, the mama wolf um, kind of goes off um, very quickly into the brush and comes back out. And Ariel, since you were the one that uh, dropped the um, cub, the puppy on the other mm -hmm. side of the, uh, the river, they will come bounding out of the brush with this long rod that has like a crystal on the end clenched in their, their teeth. And let me drop it on your character sheet. Please hold. I don't hear any music. Are we, is it playing? I hear it. Yeah, I have oh, to. Okay. I hear it. I had to turn it up a little, but. Here, let's skip the song to one that's Louder, maybe, hopefully. <laughs> oh, because it's very wintry. That's why. All right. Yeah. <laughs> so, nice winds and yeah. So where is Ariel? Here you go. Dropping this on your character sheet. Um, for the purposes of the one shot, we are ignoring att attunement rules because I think it'd just mm -hmm. be cool mm -hmm. for you guys to have it. So feel free to hand it off to whoever you want. But for now, you, you get this staff. And it's long compared to you, okay? Uh, so it's yeah. pretty big. Considerably longer than I am tall, I'm assuming. Yes. <laughs> uh, definitely not made for a fairy. But you are looking at it. Um, it's got this... The wood is interesting. It's like... Um, a blue tint, but it seems like it's a natural wood. Like it's not painted that way. And then it has these okay. these crystals on the end that almost look like some of the crystals you can actually see like on the map. So, like there's some here. There were some you guys passed. Mm -hmm. It looks very similar to that, but they seem almost sturdier because you kind of tap on it just to see like, is it ice? Mm -hmm. um, it, and it doesn't quite fit that description either. Um, so uh, they'll... Mama Wolf drops this uh, by you, Ariel, and then barks, <laughs> and the cub comes bounding over, and they rush to catch up with the uh, the rest of the pack, disappearing Yay. Okay. into the snow, blending in so quickly. Um, you can almost not see them after a couple minutes as their mm -hmm. white fur just blends into the white snow. Yay! And well, I, the, while this happens, I, I hop on, on top of the reindeer. <laughs> <laughs> sure. You're now sitting on the reindeer, and it the reindeer, I'm assuming you have made it across, and you probably would have shook off some of the water, and you're surprised, yeah. Luna, because you, the reindeer, while slightly damp, is still really warm, and, you know, that fur is, mm -hmm. it kind of just, that, uh... yeah, it kind of <laughs> just sheds that water so quickly, so, uh, 
you it's very nice you're like why why wasn't she a reindeer before this we could have right, all been yeah, super <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, yeah. all right and i think this is a good place to take a quick 15 minute break um sure. since we're about uh well hopefully we're halfway i don't know because this all of this section <laughs> was added to the one shot <laughs> So I may have made a two shot. So we'll see. But we'll take a quick 15 minute break. So we'll be back around uh, two o'clock. And um, yeah, so let's do that. Okay. <laughs> uh, what am I looking for? This button.
All right, welcome back. Uh, so our lovely party has just, um, with the help of a pack of winter wolves, uh, has deterred a baby kraken from killing them all and eating them for lunch and are now on the other side of the river, um, one of which uh, one party member um, has also received a very interesting looking staff. So what would you guys like to do? I want to build a fire and dry my armor out. Sure. Get some warmth. <laughs> Absolutely. You can do that. So you start building a fire. Uh, what is everybody else doing? I don't have any uh, fire capabilities. <laughs> <laughs> I do, but I'm currently a reindeer. And yes. uh, as a reindeer, she's just going to kind of look around, fold herself up, mm -hmm. and just sit there. Okay. Just kind of just hanging out since it looks like we're building a fire. Sure. How long does your wild Can shape... Can take a short rest? Sure. Uh, wild shape lasts... One hour, I think? Up. It's half your level, uh, for probably. For her level, I think she's two hours at this point. Okay. Yep. Um, All right. Double check this. I think, I think that's right. I think it's half your level... Um, yeah, I was in the wrong sheet. Yeah, and your level four. I can do two hours before reverting back. Perfect. Or a bonus action earlier if I want to, but... She's sure. comfy. Warmer okay. as a reindeer. <laughs> True. You are warmer, and you're also radiating a small amount of heat, which uh, Luna was uh, sucking in, but I don't know if you're still what you would like to do during this short rest. I mean, Luna's welcome to stay cuddled up to the reindeer. It's not like prison will mind. <laughs> I can take a short rest on top of the reindeer. <laughs> I just okay. feel like, oh, yes. <laughs> it's Ariel, warm. what are you doing? Ariel's just going to be like, hauling this staff around uh, <laughs> and then just walking in sort of like circles trying to be cool uh, but once the, the campfire is built cast druid craft, druid craft to light it uh, okay perfect mm. cool um, are you keeping the staff for yourself or are you I'm, I'm waiting for prism to be done being a reindeer Okay. Well, while you're holding it, I'm gonna hand it off to prison. <laughs> while you're holding it, um, it does just for the sake of this, it does essentially attune to you, um, and it does shrink mm -hmm. and get to okay. a much more uh, uh, bearable size. But it does take pretty much the entire short rest mm -hmm. for that to happen. <laughs> so you are lugging it around and just like holding mm -hmm. on to this thing. <laughs> That's fun. All right. I will take the short press then. Yep. Go ahead. Roll hit dice, whatever you guys need to do for your short rest. And you, you, nothing happens during I, it. So yeah. I, reco I, I, I recover a level, level one slot, I think, on my short rest because I have a um, thing for that. Yep. Yep. Yeah. At once the fire is built, Prism will just pop back into uh, bird form. Sure. Because now there's some heat present. Sounds good. Um, and uh. she'll just... Also, um, during your short rest, um, in particular, Prism would notice um, just passively, but um, it's pretty audible. You do hear the sound of wolves um, mm -hmm. calling to each other, and they do seem to be uh, almost surrounding you. Um, hmm. but none of them move closer. It's almost as if, and Prism, just based on your passive insight and, you know, uh, you get the sense that they're almost on guard, just making sure that you guys hmm. can, can get your, your short rest without incident. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, all right. That's nice. So you all take your short rest and, uh, Prism is no longer in reindeer form. So Ariel, if you... Nope. Would like to role play this out. And her, the now tiny, uh, mm -hmm. the if if you stopped worrying about flying so much, you could do cool stuff with like me on my feet and <laughs> go to hand her the, the staff. Okay, and as you're holding it, we're just gonna fast forward the attunement. It's it's now tiny mm -hmm. though, okay? So it's it's mm -hmm. like, I don't know, it's more like well. 
she's only about two feet taller than he is. So she's not that much bigger than him. Yes, but it's still small for a, sa- a staff. It's more like a like a walking yeah. stick or something, mm-hmm. you know? Um, but as you're looking at it and as you hold it, um, it does f- grow to its full size, but to fit you, you know? So matching mm-hmm. your height and your scale. Um, and did you drop it in her inventory? Did you hand it to her or should I do that? Can I do that? I don't know. Probably not. Well, as she's looking at it and he says this about not flying, she's going to kind of cock her head to one side. (sighs) Now, Ariel, you do know that flying is what made you effective in that battle. You were able to get out over that water and stab the thing. Of course I want to fly. It's very... (laughs) I I was just walking. (laughs) Very fast. (laughs) You know you can't fool me with that. You have wings and you use them. They're quite useful. But thank you Try for this. look over my I back. I Oh, what you're talking about? Yeah, yeah. He'll just start, like, Keep walking away. <laughs> She'll just sort of shake her head. Ruffle her feathers. All right, so... Who will lead the way? You do have a trail that you're following, um, though um, you do, you've gotten directions on where this uh, laboratory is. So you do know that eventually you have to turn off of this main sh- like road um, to kind of go in up towards the taller uh, mountains into like a little almost um, more secluded part. Um, so you do know mm-hmm. that eventually there's a turn. So who's manning the uh, this excursion? Who is in the lead and directing you guys where to go? And that person gets to roll survival. Just to see how long um, it takes you. I can do it. Sure. I would say just based on your history, roll with advantage um, because you... <laughs> Well, one, you need it, but no, (laughs) no, it's uh, (laughs) also because you are a circle of the land Arctic druid. This is your uh, favorite terrain, uh, as it were. Yeah. So, yeah, you you know what you're looking for, too, and you know how the snow works, how trails Mm -hmm. get covered pretty quickly when it snows. And it did so recently. That's why there's so much on the mountain at the moment. But um, Mm -hmm. It's not snowing right now, so you find it fairly easily, which leads us to this scene. Please let me know if you guys can mm-hmm. see or not. Mm-hmm. Yes. <laughs> I can see some of it. Okay, so don't move yet. Let me change the music. <laughs> this one is Once called Arctic mm-hmm. Lab. Oh, it's called Arctic Ooh. Lab, so I feel like it's perfect, right? Maybe. Yeah. Once we get there, Prism's going to look at the other three. Now, y'all, this is more your department than mine. I'm not uh, real good with the delivery part of these missions. More just the getting you there. So uh, maybe y'all want to take it away. Hmm. Uh, Let's do this one, actually. There you go. Arctic Lab Outside is what it's called. All right. So you do this approach. Is where we're supposed to deliver it to the doctor. So mm-hmm. you see, as you're approaching, let me read this little thing. Uh, da, 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 da. Where is it? Sorry. This is not created by me. So I have to remember everything. Um, <laughs> so, okay. So you guys um, approach the. Uh, the facility and it is rather i mean it's not a huge facility but it is rather impressive um you do uh, see it's in pretty good repair um it's got this circular almost domed uh facility uh up towards the northern part up there um that you guys can see and it does look in good repair it's a well cared for place um One of the things, though, that you notice as you're coming up uh, towards the door, off to the right on the um, side of the the trail that you were on, is a sign. And it says, 
the Nexus Laboratory keep keep out um, in all big letters. Uh, but you get the sense that this is, in fact, where you need to deliver the package. Get the package out of my pack. Yeah. Uh-huh. And we have a specific name that we're delivering it to, a Dr. Um... Oh, shoot, I didn't write it Viria down. Livia, I think? Yep, Livia. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, Dr. Valeria? Valeria, Valeria Livia. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Valeria. Oh. Is there a bell, um, a pull string, just wooden doors? What's the, you actually what's see the situation at the front door? A strange little um, circular button uh, that you think probably is a bell of some sort. Smash the button. Okay, <laughs> you smash the button and um, <laughs> you hear, and, and it almost like echoes throughout the interior of the building, just this, um, like, dong, like, almost like a, a giant church bell has been hit. Um, but it doesn't, it almost seems or sounds artificial. Like, you don't think it was an actual mm. bell that rang. Um, Let go of the button and try just barely touching the button. Does the same sound. <laughs> <laughs> nope, it does the same. softer? It's the same amount of of same loud ringing uh, noise. And then all of a sudden you, um, and it startles you, but it seems to echo from this this button. Um, you just hear a voice, I'm coming, I'm coming, that comes out of this, this button. Um, and uh, you also hear just briefly after that, this... Did they read the sign? Like a mutter of like these <laughs> these people. Who's ringing the door at this at this hour? Um, not that it's late. It did take you a couple hours to get to this point, and after your long rest, um, it is getting closer to evening time. The sun hasn't set yet, but you are at around four thirty, five o'clock, somewhere around there. Um, so you, it is getting closer to evening. Mm-hmm. Um, is anybody else doing anything while Rowan's at the door? How long it's, it's passed then since we departed from, I guess, town? You departed at about 10 a.m. So, um, and it took you about two hours to get uh, about halfway. I would say the river was about halfway on your trek. Um, so, so like six hours? So like six hours, yeah. Okay. Mage arm was still up. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I think... Uh, the only thing Prism's doing is keeping an eye out. Mm-hmm. Um, after having encountered that Kraken, she's a little bit twitchy. Mm-hmm. Um, so she's just trying to keep an eye out, see if there's anything else unusual. Just make a perception roll for me. Okay. And Ariel, are you doing anything during this time? Um, <laughs> I am just moving up uh, next to uh, work, right? Uh, the door, sorry. Rowan um, and... <laughs> yeah, Rowan, yeah. Uh, behind and to the side of him. Okay. So, Prism, you're trying to keep a good eye out, um, but you actually get distracted, and here is what is distracting. You're looking over at this domed uh, section of the building, and there's something glinting and shiny um, on top of it. There are several different... <laughs> Uh, little uh, <laughs> like circular things all around the the outside of the dome, and that catches your eye and kind of distracts you from you know being on the lookout. Mm-hmm. <laughs> she she likes the shinies. <laughs> She's got this like very like stoic looking armor on. Her black le- her leather armor is black, but there's like little bits and bobs of like shiny metal like just sewn to various parts of the armor. So like all the mm-hmm. buckles are super polished and really, really shiny, but everything else is just black, just like her feathers, except for all the little shiny bits she's attached. Mm-hmm. Very, very Corvid. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. So uh, Rowan, you uh, stand here waiting and it takes like a good minute or two um, for before someone comes up and the door opens I don't know that you guys will be able to see into it until you step in. So just give it a second. But you open the door. When the door opens. Go ahead. 
when the door opens and there's a person standing there. I say, I can't read. The name's Rowan. It's not that late. And we got a package for the doctor. <laughs> okay. Well, one thing you do notice is this door is very interesting. Okay. Instead of opening or swinging open like a door normally does, this one actually slides into the wall. Oh. Um, and you, as it does that, you realize that it's also not like stone. It's not a wooden door. It's got to be some sort of metallic material. Um, and it slides open. And you see this, another dwarf, actually. Um, so about the same height as you with a thick <laughs> uh, beard, very thick brown hair, a little bit of gray in the beard. But he has these two goggles on the top of his head. Um, and he just is wearing, he's also wearing a white lab coat. Uh, and he says, well, 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 just just come in then. And he steps back. I'm going to let you guys now walk into the room. So you should be able to cross the, the threshold so you guys can actually see into it. I will um, say that no. uh, Prism is still kind no? of looking I'm at the, the shinies. Bouncing okay. off. That's weird. There we go. Uh, let me look. Let me just look. I bet you there's like a wall. Or... There is. Hold on. That explains it. I had a, a door and a wall in the same place. Now you should be able to s kind of see in, actually. There we go. <laughs> Fixed yeah, it. In. All right. Before so. I go in, I reach down and grab a pebble off of the ground and chuck it at Prism. <laughs> <laughs> oh. And as I'm walking through, I sort of raise my hand. I'm like, I can't read. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, the the uh, doctor or the guy in the lab coat uh, looks at you, Rowan, since you were the first to enter and goes, uh, do you have it? Do you have the package? My name is Dr. Gradius Stoutbrand. Um, if you have it, show it to me and I shall go get your money. It's in my hands. Okay, he looks at it, checks the label, which is kind of smeared because you um, you did fall in the water, but it's still somewhat legible. Um, so he nods, he rushes off into the other room, and he just says, come in, come in, take a seat, it'll only be a second. And he runs over behind uh, some curtains, and you hear him going through some drawers um, and all of that. Um, you hear the clink of coins. And then... All of a sudden, bah, 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 bah. all of a sudden, you just hear this blaring siren go off. All uh -oh. the door locks behind you, uh, Luna, Sh slams shut, Continue locks behind you. Uh huh. And uh, Doctor Stoutbrand comes out, um, rushing out from behind the curtain, pulls you all into. This room. Uh, da, da. As as I'm getting pulled in, I try to like scrape some of the food off of the plates on the table. Sure. <laughs> start shoving it in my mouth. He pulls you off into essentially the panic room. You do manage to grab. It's like some sort of potato, like a baked potato. Mm -hmm. um, very delicious. Um, it was half eaten. Um, so you, mm -hmm. and it's still kind of warm. So you suspect that that was what, uh, Stoutbrand was doing, eating, uh, mm -hmm. his evening meal. How, how have we been pulled into this room? Like what, what drag you all seeing? Yes. He, he's moving you all into the panic room. He goes quickly, quickly. And he pulls you all in. He doesn't oh, let you see. have a choice in this matter. He just pulls you into this room, which has a little siren going off. And as he does that too, all the lights in the building go out um aside from this one siren so let me change all the things hold on oh, and it's dark <laughs> and i have to move the map too <laughs> that's nice so there you that's go really cool. I like that. so all the lights that's have gone good... out <laughs> go ahead good effect thanks yeah 
Uh, so all the lights go out. He's pulled you into this panic room and he just goes, oh, God, it's really happening, isn't it? Um, he just looks at you and he says, well, he has a special line here. Hold on. Sorry, there's all, all a lot of notes on here. Mm. Okay, here it is. Uh, so, oops, I hope I didn't unplug my mic. Nope. Okay. So he just goes, ah, uh, I can't believe this is happening. He's like, he's visibly panicking. Okay. Um, even though he's, you know, a short, stout uh, looking dwarven fellow, he's he's visibly panicked. And he goes... So this package that you delivered, it's actually a part of an antidote. And if this alarm is going off, that means the reason we have an antidote, the creature um, has probably escaped containment. And that is not good. And it also means we can't leave. We can't leave until we either deal with it, give them the an antidote, or, you know, find some way to get out. But let me tell you, I don't know what that way is. Um, he And then he goes, I think our best bet would be to give Dr. Valeria Livia it, the uh, this package that you're holding. You're still holding it, Rowan. And he points to um, that. And then she can finish the antidote and give it to Jameson. And then hopefully everything will be fine. Well, we were supposed to deliver it to her. Yes, but it I is slightly. Problem with delivering the package to her. It is slightly concerning, though, that she is not here in this room. So, just keep that in mind. Because protocol. What is a Jameson? Jameson is our fellow doctor, and uh, he was doing some experiments. Um, I'm not entirely sure what he was working on. Uh, Doctor Valeria would probably be. Uh, or Dr. Olivia would be able to um, probably go into that as she is the head uh, scientist in this facility. Um, and that project was not one that I was working on. But whatever he did went wrong. And Where, where can I, we find uh, Valeria? Is it Valeria? Yeah, Dr. Mm -hmm. Valeria Olivia. Um, that's the head, head scientist here. Right. Um, well, last I saw her, she was in the office, which would be uh, if you go out of this room, just go north. It's the first door on the right. That's where she was. I am not sure where she might be currently. And the fact that she did not rush to the panic room, as protocol states, suggests she either went to see what was wrong or he just kind of shrugs. I don't know. It could be anything. Now, Doctor, what exactly do you need an antidote for? He's a troll. He turned into a troll. <laughs> I don't know what oh. experiment that he did, but he transformed and is not himself. So we did our best to contain him, but he he's definitely not himself. Would Prism know anything about trolls? Roll a nature check for me. You are level four, so I don't know, but we'll see. Eleven. Um, you've heard of trolls. You know they are not mm -hmm. fun to tangle with, but you yourself, being level four, have not really encountered trolls, um, and you weren't really studying trolls or um, creatures of that nature. So, anything else? She'd just look at the others. Well, trolls aren't exactly fun to deal with. It's gonna be interesting we better, then. Yes, we better be quick. You got the money for our package? <laughs> <laughs> and he just tosses a, a bag of um of coin at you, Rowan, um, and says, Yes. Now please just Get her this antidote. 
or this part I is part over, of hand the... In the... Okay. I hand in the box and say, lead on. <laughs> <laughs> and he and he how do just... you open that front door thing? He just pushes <laughs> it back at you and says, I can't do this. I I do I look like I am capable of fighting a troll? Or subduing you look a troll? Like a damn dwarf. You are born capable, lad. <laughs> He's like, I I will stay here in the panic room as protocol dictates. He's not moving. He's just he cr- he pushes the package towards you. Even if you don't take it, he will let it fall on the ground and he will cross his arms and step back. <laughs> I am not doing this. I am not paid enough uh, to do this. Pick it up, put it back in my Will it fit in the belt patch rather than the backpack? Sure. Too, too... Um at this point, he would have probably also opened it. It's a um uh the uh box itself just to check that it was the stuff was in there um and uh you find that it's like a small little vial of some sort of interesting liquid so if you wanted you could put that vial um in your belt or in a small pouch um instead of carrying the package not that the package is that big but it would be less bulky that way so i guess we're gonna have to leave this room (laughs) <laughs> I yes. want to. I'll sacrifice a small pair of scissors out of my um, jeweler's kit and before toss them to you... him as we leave. <laughs> oh, okay. Go ahead. I was gonna say before you um, you take that and leave you leave the room. Prism would look at you and go. You know, uh, if I take that with me, I can turn mm. into a uh, a beast. It'll be protected. I toss Can't it be to smashed. her. <laughs> I'll give it to her. She'll, she'll grab it, stick it in her belt pouch, and then the second we're out of the room, she's going to wild shape. Okay. Perfect. And I give the... I give, um... Gratty... What is Gradius? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I give Gradius a small pair of scissors. So, mm-hmm. Cut your damn beard, you're a freaking gnome. <laughs> <laughs> well... <laughs> Alright. Um... So he just like, you toss the the scissors at him. He just steps back. He doesn't even try to grab them and let them fall on the ground. And he just goes, well, you just do your job. I'll pay you extra. Just go. <laughs> and then, uh, <laughs> and then you that can, uh, so oh he will push a button mm-hmm. under the desk um, and uh-huh. the door to the oh i mean the wrong thing the door to the panic room will open and again it slides just like the front door did uh it okay. slides open right. and makes as, a metallic thud mm-hmm. as it slides starts to slide open i will turn that direction and bring my shield up and i guess i'll go ahead and grab the hammer since uh, mm-hmm. i got sure. a free hand now and awesome let's observe the room sure what animal are you turning into, uh, Prism? I was gonna go for the musk ox, but it's large, so it won't fit down the corridors. Um, mm-hmm. So I think she's going to instead go for quick and clever, and mm-hmm. she's gonna turn into an ermine. Sounds good. So I'll switch her over. All right, uh, Luna Ooh, and Ariel. What would you I like to do? Little and hard to hit. <laughs> well, I also go out and I pull out my rapier just just in case. Okay. And you still have mage armor. I lost, yes. I lost my token vision again. Uh, sorry. sorry. I think that's my bad. I don't think I gave any of them vision when I made the token. So it's just a quick click. There you go. Did that work? Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So probably all of your tokens, all of your wild shapes won't have vision. So just remind me when it comes up. <laughs> yeah. What, what, what a creature are you right now? I'm in like Ermine. Oh, it's okay. like a little ermine. They're like stoats. They're they're basically what um you know those Winter fancy weasels. medieval cloaks. <laughs> yeah, the fancy medieval cloaks that have the little black uh dots on them. It's an ermine. They're basically what people would make those really big fancy monarch cloaks out of in the Middle Ages. Mm-hmm. So they're well, little I, weasel I, I pick up the little weasel and I put it on my back. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. As we're coming out, I'm going to cast Mage Armor on myself. Sounds good. Very cool. You're going to be covered by my hat. 
Yeah. <laughs> oh, we got a ratatouille situation. Uh -huh. <laughs> well, she's not gonna be in my head, just like like uh, on my shoulder. You know, the head is gonna, yeah. gonna be like covered under the head. I guess. Kind yeah. of <laughs> hiding under the brim and around your neck, just. Right. Oh, oh, oh! I was thinking actually under the hat. <laughs> yeah. Steering him. Steering him. <laughs> Steering him. <laughs> just kind of cuddled up around the neck and hiding under the brim of the hat. Okay. Um, I will. I'll. I'll try to push forward first, though. Okay. Get that hallway. Sure. Um, I am. You better check to, that side room out. Um, how how tall is the the ceiling in this? It's actually area? really tall in here. Um, you okay. would say I'd say like probably like six to eight feet somewhere like so seven we'll say seven <laughs> so seven feet tall okay. um and uh you did notice that the domed area was even taller almost like two or three stories tall um mm -hmm. so uh yeah are, are there rafters and stuff or is it just a, a flat topped just flat in this particular section okay uh then i'll i'll stay on the ground try to move quietly down this mm -hmm. hall Is there, is there anything uh, in that side room? Door to the left. Uh huh. So um, there's all sort of like. Go ahead. Sorry. So Rowan, you peek around the corner. Nothing in this room. You see, it's more like living quarters. Um, you get the sense that like there's like beds and that kind of stuff over here. Um, it is dark, but you have dark vision, so it's fine. Um, right? You have dark vision, I think, as a dwarf. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. so, yes. uh, it, you can see, um, you know, the shapes and outlines of essentially beds. Um, everybody seems to sleep in here. There's like a hammock. There's, uh, all of that kind of stuff in this area. Um, we are in like dim light, I guess then. Um, yes, mostly. Cause you have, you have, uh, I think all of you have dark vision. Yeah. So I it do, should yeah. Oh, well, as an ermine, do you have dark vision? Do not. I don't think so. No, I don't think it, it's got keen okay. hearing and smell, but not dark vision. Okay. So um, beyond the uh, room, which is getting some light from that siren that's going off, you mm -hmm. it's pitch black. Same with you, Ariel. You mm -hmm. cannot really see beyond. You do okay. see a door here, and you see a door to the right um, over here, too. Okay as you're moving forward um yep. but it's really hard for you guys you to see okay i message uh prism since i guess she can't really speak right now yeah. uh, shall we check the rooms in this corridor <laughs> you can you can I'll, mentally I'll answer listen mm -hmm. okay I? okay yeah i was uh, gonna say then should we check the rooms you do, um, I think I said, but um, Stabrin said that most likely she would be in the first room to mm -hmm. the, which one is it? To the right. First to the right, I believe. Mm -hmm. First room to the I right. Prism would mentally respond. Uh, probably the office first. Best place to look. That's that's message. Mm -hmm. Uh, at each of the, the doors as I'm moving forward, I'd like to stop, spend a moment to listen, see if I hear anything inside. Sure. Make a perception check for me. So we've got two people that can't see? Yes. Mm -hmm. Right. But Prism has advantage on listening, I believe, you said? Keen, keen listening or something, you said? Yeah. Mm -hmm. She has keen hearing as a, a little stoat. Keen hearing and smell. So, so Ariel... She's blind. A torch. Yeah, that's a good idea. Okay. So you pull All out right, a torch. So I'll, I'll take out a torch out of my pack and uh, light it up and hook it on the uh, hook it on the uh, um, hook points on my shield. Perfect. Mm -hmm. So now you guys can see the full corridor now. Um and the two doors. Ariel, you try listening um, to each of the mm -hmm. doors here, and you're not hearing anything, but you also notice that Rowan's big, 
like clomping boots are making a lot of noise mm-hmm. as he moves through this uh, area. So you get kind of distracted with that. Yep. Which one was the office? First one on the right. So you would uh, right. think this one. This one here. Mm-hmm. Yep. I I opened them. Yeah. Do you want to? Do you open it fully? Do you just swing it open? These ones seem like normal doors. They do not seem like the front door or the panic room door. They're wooden doors. They swing open, so you could crack it open if you want, or you could just fling it open. You tell me. I mean, I don't like push it up, but I do open it slowly. But I do, I do want to go. I want to see the entire room, so I do open it entirely. Yep. So you open it up, and it does look like an office. You see, there's like a chair, a nice rug, a little bookshelf, and a desk with um, some sort of paper on it. But you do not see anybody in this room. I do. I do kind of like check you know i put my head in to see if there's nothing in like in the corners kind of thing nope you can step like, in if you would like and yeah if it gives no, you no 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 one inside uh-uh. next door ariel <laughs> okay i i you said i listened to the first two so i didn't hear on anything on the second one either and i'll push past yeah. it a little bit yeah so you didn't hear anything on that second door so Who's o- are you opening that one or? I mean, yeah, I'm still gonna open it. <laughs> checking in. Mm-hmm. You know, slowly just checking to see if there's anything inside. Mm-hmm. Don't get too far. Sorry, I was eating a nugget. Um. <laughs> so, you open this up, and this one looks more like a library or a research center, uh, or or where they keep all of their research. Um, books and things like that. So you do see like a desk um, that is probably kind of hard to see um, without uh, Rowan stepping up a little bit. But you see there's like a bunch of different vials of stuff. Um, You see some uh, ingredients kind of chopped up and like it looks like they were in the middle of something, but um, nothing completely brewed. Uh, You do see a whole bunch of books and stuff on the upper section and then you do see like a small writing desk uh with a book that's open and looks like um has been there are a whole bunch of notes in it um but you would have to actually step up to it to yeah, be able I, to read it yeah i just want to check to see if, if 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 it was maybe written recently or or, or you know maybe someone was writing something and run away mm-hmm check if if there's anything important or just notes about whatever they were researching yeah so you do you pick this up and you look at it before you read the most recent notes you just kind of flip to the front see if there's like a name on it or anything um but you do see um that it's handwritten like a journal or exactly like research notes of some sort and flipping to the front quickly you notice that um at the bottom is a small engraving that says uh, Dr. Jameson Hogg. Um, Hmm. And then you flip back to the main, uh, the last written section, and you find that uh, these are notes about the, a a a synthesized, gosh, a synthesized, uh, amplification serum. Uh, so he has these notes about how uh, this could be a breakthrough on making the super soldier, that this could be uh, just what they need to to make a lot of money, but also to help with, you know, the bandits in the area, giving this serum mm-hmm. to uh, guards to help protect, um, you know, small towns uh in the tundra and Mm -hmm. uh he he believes it could pretty much turn any anyone into like a super muscular um person but he he also writes that uh dr livia will not let him test it on anybody quite yet and he's you can tell as he gets closer to the bottom of this he's getting more frustrated you know i like uh, if we could just test it out, see if my theories are correct, that this these ingredients would work. I know it will. You know, he's getting kind of you can you can tell he's super eager. It also seems that he's eager to um, to prove something. You get that kind of sense mm-hmm. as you're reading this. Um, 
And finally, the last little entry on these notes says, well, if she won't let me test it on others, then I guess I'll have to test it on myself. And then that's where the last note uh, ended. I have this itch and urge to want to read everything here, but I know we are in like a high insensitive <laughs> mo uh, moment, so I'm going to have to come back later. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I just uh, tell uh, Warwick and, and Ariel, and I guess Prism can listen. She's, she's right here. It looks like the, what's the name? J Jameson might have injected something in himself. Uh, so we might find game change if the side effects of whatever he was working on did something wrong. Hmm. Well, weren't we told that he turned into a troll? Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, so maybe that's what so we, we are supposedly aware that... have. The, and we supposedly have the antidote. Mm -hmm. Or a component to it, at least. So that's what he meant by uh... super soldier then. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> oh boy. But that's about all you find in this room, other than some ingredients uh, and stuff on this table here. You do see there's pages uh, kind of laid out there. Um, but again, you'd have to get closer to look at them. I'm just going to assume those are probably ingredients for the thing, but um, I really want to come back and check it out <laughs> as soon sure. as we find this troll. Okay. So what's next? Shall we keep a uh, check the next okay. door? As a quick point of order, um, mm -hmm. I did during the short rest uh, use natural recovery to get my one spell that I used back. Okay, so. good to know. Yeah, I think too. <laughs> Ariel, you uh, roll another perception check at this door, the third door here, um, to the left. Okay. A little bit better. So you do, um, you lean up against it. And this time before you lean up, you kind of like put a hand out to make everybody like be quiet and stop moving. Um, mm -hmm. So you can actually hear something's moving in there. Um, it almost sounds like, uh, yeah, with you, with a 12, um, you could kind of tell that there's like the crunching of almost glass or something okay. on the floor, maybe against like it's like glass against maybe a rock like if you took a rock and you were smooshing mm -hmm. like gra like glass into the ground that's kind of what it sounds like okay so like i'll turn around and stage whisper basically there's something in here <laughs> i'll turn around and stage whisper back to the room. he's found something <laughs> why don't um... you let me open the door Okay, uh, let me just double check something here. Um, Mrs. Ermine Prism, can you uh, just roll a perception check on, but you don't know what it is. Sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so with a 17, um, you smell something and it immediately, um, it doesn't affect you or anything, mm -hmm. but just the scent of it, because by the time it reaches you through the door and all of that, it's, um, what is the word? Like, uh, it's not as thick, you know, so it's not as, uh, as concentrated. So, mm -hmm. but you still get the smell of it with your, with your, uh, your ermine nose. Um, so... It smells like something toxic, like like if you were using a poison or something, you would you like if you tipped your arrows or you you know tipped a weapon in poison. Um, it kind of smells like that in the air, um, close to this door. Mm. I think she would probably start to chitter uh, nervously, uh, trying to alert them that something's wrong, I and then. It I message her like, oh, something happened. Mm -hmm. Smells toxic. <laughs> she says it. that she says that something smells toxic around around here. Mm -hmm. Okay. Rowan, you step up to the door. Ariel, do you let Rowan 
swap with you? Yep. Okay. <laughs> I'll step I'll step forward so that he can get to the door. Okay. I look back at Luna. What do you mean smells toxic? Well, Prism smells something toxic in this area. I can ask her again, like, what, what exactly is it, or where does it come from? Where is it coming from? I mean, do I smell it coming out from under the door? Make, I mean, give make a, good... a perception check with advantage now that it's kind of been pointed out to you. So you're kind of looking perception. for that smell. I can never remember. Shift alt. Alt. Alt for, for advantage. Yeah. Just alt. alt is advantage. Mm -hmm. Got it. Ooh. Nice one. Nice. Yeah, otherwise it was a three. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. So you, now that you know what you're looking for, you can smell it. You can smell this like toxic, to toxicity in the air kind of seeping out from under the door frame and around the door frame, around this door. Um, and uh, so you I'm suspect this from this I'm pretty adept room. at poisons. Mm hmm I'm pretty adept mm -hmm. at poisons, guys. You might wanna, you might wanna step back before I open this. And I will pull out a, uh, a dirty handkerchief and um, mm -hmm. let it down and tie it around my, tie it around my nose and my mouth mm -hmm. before I open I'm the door. Up, I'm up two squares back then. Okay. Mm -hmm. There um, you go. Seeing this, I think Prism's gonna hop down. Okay. Um, from Luna's shoulder and back up a little further and just revert to her bird form because she's not sure what he's about to find in there but probably going to need to do some something more impressive. All right. Let's uh, go ahead and do that. I'm not going to I'm not going to throw the door open to make it make mm -hmm. a big air buff, but I am going to mm -hmm. slowly open it all the way. Sure. So it opens all the way. Um, Ariel, are you doing anything before he opens the door? Other, I, I'm going to have my, uh, short sword out and sort of prep to go in there if need be. Perfect. Mm. Um, so you guys are all prepared, hopefully. Um, Rowan opens this door, um, and, uh, a cloud of this gas just comes, not quickly wafting out but does just hit you like a wall um and luckily you you've covered your face and everything so it doesn't seem to affect you at all um but you see in the far corner you see there's just this tank that's been laid out on um like a table it's broken open and there's glass shards all over the floor you also see um, two other tanks kind of to the north with some, one has like a rat in it and one is empty, um, but they're just like hovering suspended in it. And you also see on the floor, it looks to be, um, an empty syringe on the floor and uh -oh. you see, what? A doctor, doctor, a female elven doctor um, in her lab coat. She is writhing on the floor and oh, no. slowly her body starts to mutate and these claws come out of her hands. Her eyes have turned a bright red um, and she's like mid transformation. Uh, when you walk in and she turns, stands up, turns towards you and attacks. So we're going to roll initiative. Oh, no. Dr. Livingston, I presume. <laughs> yeah. All right. So you should be oh, able to do that. No. Let's change the music, shall we? Let's do combat. Right. Initiative. That's the thing. It is indeed. <laughs> and I keep my streak of going last. <laughs> I rolled a two. Not by much. <laughs> All right, so. Goodness gracious, okay. <laughs> this is the worst place to fight, too, because you're in the narrow. 
Yeah, corridor. it's not great. That's for sure. We're not going to be in the narrow corridor for long. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I don't like the sounds of that, but <laughs> so that brings us oh. thematically. This really you're fits. the only one with light. Mm -hmm. You can't see because he's in the corridor right now. So, uh, yeah. but let's begin combat. So we start with Rowan. So you see this doctor has transformed into something, turns to you and like hisses. So um, there's two rings on the side of the, the, the shield that the, the torch is stuck in. So mm -hmm. I'm going to keep the torch up and in front of me so I can see really well at her because she's mm -hmm. got red glowing eyes. But I'm going to step in um, to the room right to there. Okay. And I am going to try and bash her with my hammer. Do it. Don't and forget to. I will to... tell you the idea is going to be no... uh, the idea is going to be to try and knock her back. Makes sense. All right. I have to roll oh, a save. That. Right. Yeah. Saving throw. I'm going to use that ability. Ah, only a one. That sucks. That does suck. But it's still at least something. But she does, unfortunately, um, it's strange because she looks like a thin, um, lithe elf, you know. And you've you've dealt with elves before. You know how puny they are. So <laughs> it's kind <laughs> of that's what I was thinking. That's kind of surprising that she manages to hold her ground as you try to bash her and push her forward. Um, Question. Mm hmm. I can only use an inspiration on my role. I can't use it against her on her role. Um, yeah, it's on like your roles, like attack roles or okay. even like perception yep. or any action that requires yep. a role. Yep. Yeah, I didn't know if I could make her reroll yeah, first with the inspiration. It's not like luck. It's not Lucky. Like yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. Yep. That's. Yep. Well, that was. That was my attempt was to clear it and to knock her back further. Okay. Which she did take about ten points of damage off that attack, so she did. I, I hear a little bit of the commotion and the, the hit, so I'm like, oh, something happened. So I move mm -hmm. forward. Whoa. And I mm -hmm. see them in combat, so since I already have my rapier, uh um uh, I'm just gonna test the waters and just do a regular attack. Okay. Uh, obviously, booming blade attack. Mm -hmm. Wait, let me check what weapon I have. I uh, should have the. Yeah, I do yell thing. as he comes in. It's stronger than it looks. Mm -hmm. Yep, I'm gonna do a regular attack with it with the rapier. Boom, and then I Perfect. Move, move back again. Mm -hmm. And as you. Turn. As you move back, you you rush in, you know, try to pierce this creature, um, this former doctor. As you're doing that, you do see there is like a small name tag of sorts on her lab coat. And it is Dr. Livia because you're getting right up and cl close and personal. Um, so you do right. see this is the doctor you were looking for um, and you step back. Um, it does do a good amount of damage and she does... Uh, kind of snarl at you as it does definitely hurt. We might, we might need to give her the antidote. So Kylie, mm -hmm. this is the doctor we're looking for. This is the doctor you're looking for. <laughs> um, oh, and it's the doctor's turn. Uh, so the doctor doesn't like um, that you stabbed her, but you've kind of disappeared into the hallway and she still has Rowan in front of her. So she's going to uh, look at Rowan. So hold on, let me make sure. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Oh, I forgot about this. Oh, also, I'm sorry, Luna, you need to make a constitution saving throw. I'm sorry, I forgot, because you stepped into the room. And you didn't have oh, anything on oh. your face, did you? Nope. Okay, yeah, so you need... Constitution needed... save. 
Yes, please. As, oh, that should do it. That's yeah. a good number. Yep. Perfectly fine. So you stepped into the room, and when you did, that wall of, like, toxic gas hit you. And you feel it kind of seep into you, and then you just kind of shake it off, and you're fine. But because you get right up in there, you realize it's actually coming from the doctor herself. Oh. Um, all right. We need, to, we, we need to move her out of the out of the, out of the facility. Um, so she sees you, and I don't know if she... Let's see. She would probably claw you. She's got these new claws on her hands, um, and she goes to claw at you. Oh, we miss. But she tries to swipe at you with these claws, and as she does so, um, you kind of just use your shield, and it glances off, but you notice that it leaves some sort of strange liquid on your, on your shield that kind of evaporates as soon as it goes by, but you saw it for that split second. Um, and that will be the end of her turn, I think. Yep. She doesn't have too much. That gas, though, is not fun. All right, Ariel, your turn. I'm going to step over here, mm -hmm. uh, see what's going on, and then I'm going to cast uh, Fairy Fire. Okay. She doesn't look very troll like. No. No green not. skin, right? Nope. She does not look troll-like at all. Um, and I'm going to cast it up here. Okay. Nice. Uh, so she is glowing. Yep. Or is she, she saved. Dang. Oh no! Yeah, Dang, she saved. She saved. <laughs> so you try. But you tr there try. is dim light in the room now, so even if the torch goes out. Perfect. Um, that's gonna be my action. Uh, da -da -da -da. I think. Probably I'm going to step back here, bonus action, hide. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, good one. Roll, yeah, that'll be my turn. Roll a stealth check for me. Okay. Da -da. Stealth. Uh, it's just going to be an 11. Mm. Okay, hold on. Uh, let me just roll this. Okay. Noted. All right. So that leaves us to Prism. Your friends are fighting. Okay. You can hear it. <laughs> the vial we were given, is it just like a single bottle of something? Yes, and um, the Dr. Stoutbrand kind of mentioned it was a component. It's not the full antidote. Mm -hmm. Right. So doing something with it to her is not going to change anything. Mm -hmm. um, I think Prism is going to... She's currently blind in the hallway since the light is all the other direction. You can see uh, a little bit because the door to the panic room is still mm -hmm. open, and you can even see um, the dwarven fellow kind of peeking out, um, mm -hmm. looking to see what's going on. Um, so you still get the siren light, but it kind of puts a red glow on everything, and it's still kind of hard to see. But to see anything else would be very difficult. So mm -hmm. um, as a bonus action, uh, she's going to switch the staff to her offhand, Mm -hmm. and she's going to summon her flame blade in her other hand okay. as her bonus action. Oh. And uh, so she's now got a flame blade up that sheds bright light in 10-foot radius and dim light for an additional 10. And uh, she's going to move up and dart into this room where all of the components were out on the And she's going to quickly check and see if this table is laid out with components 
for a current creation or if this is the past creation that made the serum is this like old ingredients things that weren't mm -hmm. in process or is this in the process of making a potion and stopped it so just make a an investigation roll for me um to see okay. what you you gather and it froze hang on <laughs> it always happens on your turn it seems <laughs> oh yeah absolutely Can you guys hear the TV? I just want to double check. No. Okay. No. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I can't get my character sheet to pop up. Press C. Yeah, it's not working. I don't know oh. why. What? Is it? Me double clicking on her. Let me turn off the torch. Can you do it now? No. Okay. <laughs> I refreshed. Ooh. Nothing's happening. I don't know what's going uh... on. Right, oh, well, you sk I, we skipped your turn. Hold on, let's go back. Yeah, I, I skipped it along. I was like, well, I don't want to hold things up. Um, Can you just roll a d20? I, can, I can't I yeah. can open it either, actually. You're broken. I know, I, I'm broken. I, yeah. I just, I'm just broken. Uh, let me I break it, 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 it um, probably was that wild ship that... Maybe. No, because I was able to pull it up to make the flame blade. I yeah, I can't open it uh, at all. Hang on, I will quickly pull it up in D and D Beyond. So I have. Her. Yeah, that'll uh, work. Stats. It's weird because so I can open literally everybody else's. Mhm. Mm I'm just I break things. What can I say, Kylie? I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm I'm cursed in some way. So you said that was investigation. Yes. Actually, I can't open Ariel's character sheet either. So don't close your character I... sheet. Okay. <laughs> All right, that's a seven. Okay. Um, mm. You can't tell what this is specifically for, but based on your nature um, background, you can mm -hmm. tell that the herbs and stuff are pretty fresh. Um, but other than that, you can't really tell what this is for. Unless okay. uh, you do see... You do see some notes there, but it's just the like a list of the ingredients. You would mm -hmm. have to really kind of know those things and nothing is like sticking out to you okay cool um then i think she's going to uh i think she's gonna take that little vial that's mm -hmm. quite smashable um and she's going to tuck it uh like into if there's like a cupboard or something in this room mm -hmm. she's gonna take it and put it in like the back of a cupboard um in a sure. place where she'll know where it is, but it's going to be at least somewhat oh. protected from getting smashed. Um, and then uh, she's going to leave the room and she's done that and sure. just be out in the corridor with her light. Um, uh, so you put it in this, like that place where the, mm -hmm. the notes that Luna read earlier um, mm -hmm. from Dr. Jameson, there's like a little drawer in there, because there's not really any cabinets. This is more of a library than anything else. But mm -hmm. you do find a little drawer in there, and you just tuck it in there, um, safe and sound. Um, so it is. And in... she might take like a piece of her her cloak or something and wedge it in there to kind of like make sure that it stays somewhat cushioned. Um, sure. Because it might be the way to deal with this. And then she'll just step out with the flame blade and the staff in the other hand. All right. Um, and that ends her turn. Sounds good. That brings us to Rowan. Your turn. Hmm. All right. I'm going to make another side step just to change the angle a bit. And let's uh, attempt to smash on her again. Mm -hmm. All right. Drive her back into that vat. Let me roll a strength save. Also a question um, while I'm rolling this strength save. Ariel and Prism, are you using not the default character sheet yeah i bet you it's yeah, that i'm using uh -huh. um hold on i'm gonna turn it off it's gonna make it's gonna force mm -hmm. a reload um but okay. was it tiny yeah using the default was it tiny sheets tidy sheets i was using tidy yeah then that's yeah. probably what it is so i'm gonna turn it off sorry 
<laughs> it was right, working. I, I didn't know if you were using it, so I didn't give you the link for the, the update for that one. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> no worries. We'll have to deal with it next time. Um, but there you go. So I'll give you guys all a now. yeah. I'll give you all a second to get back in. I'm in. Okay. Looks like I'm in. Perfect. So did it count that extra five damage? It did not. So I will subtract that from her. Um, she does not make her strength save. So she does um, get pushed 15 feet. But before, I'm sorry, at the start of your... go 15, yeah. Well, yeah. Um, before nope. uh, that happens, though, I forgot you started within five feet of her. So I need you to make a um, con saving throw. This would have happened at the start of your turn. And is this a poison type thing? It is. And you have cloth on your face, so you would be able to I get advantage because I'm I get advantage because I'm a dwarf as well. Yeah, so you have double advantage, mm -hmm. but <laughs> no, that doesn't work. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or did you say saving throw or ability check? It doesn't really matter. Uh saving throw, yeah, it doesn't really matter. Um Yeah. So yeah. You rolled a nineteen, that's fine. Yeah. It's fine. So you're you're good. Um, you do feel it like almost like it's trying to penetrate this cloth on your face, but your heritage and your precautions have pretty much negated the effect. But she does get pushed back. Um, which direction do you want to like I'm over here or you want back from me? I'm hoping to put her in those vats of acid or whatever they are. OK, so you push her back. Um, let's see. So like that right there. Mm -hmm. um, yep. So you push her back into the one kind of strange looking vat of, it's almost like a glowing liquid. Um, just the liquid itself is glowing. You don't see any lights or anything like making it light up. Um, and that's the one that has like a strange rat in it. And you push her into this. Um, let me just see if it breaks it or not. I'm just gonna say, over a 10, it will break the, the vat. It does not. So you push... Oh, we rolled for her, but whatever. Uh, you push her into it, and it does knock it into the wall and up against the other vat next to it, but it doesn't break. And um, you watch the rat that's inside kind of jiggle, um, and you see it's like claws stretch a little bit, but it doesn't do anything else. Um, and... I would say she probably takes, so she took your um, five damage for pushing her, but running into this thing, she's going to take another D4 of just bludgeoning, bludgeoning damage as she gets pushed into this wall. Ooh, a three. Um, she is looking pretty rough now at this point, so um, that will be, is that the end of your turn, Rowan? I'm, gonna, I'm still going to use my um, movement mm -hmm. to move over to here and keep her from leaving the room if she tries to you just want to block that doorway sure the, po the point of pushing her out is so she moves so my damage triggers <laughs> <laughs> yeah technically she didn't move willingly so it didn't trigger yeah um but now it is your turn luna so now the... the the spike growth man because it doesn't <laughs> matter if it's forced movement yeah any movement that spell is nasty. What do I do? Do I see her from here? Uh, let me click. Let me see. Uh, yeah, you can see her from there. You can tell. She's right So there. she looks, you know, rough around the edges, you said? Yeah. Yeah, she definitely is looking pretty pretty roughed up. You see the, the cuts and bruises from being pushed and uh, bludgeoned with a war hammer is... I'm, go I'm going to cast Magic Missile. I'm going to hope or at least try not to kill her in case I do enough damage. So if mm -hmm. if she ends up, you know, falling, I'm trying to, like, knock her out, maybe. Okay. So let's do Magic Missile and see if it's, a oh, it's blocked by a wall. I guess I have to move. <laughs> You step, right. you step um, into the room, um, but because the uh, doctor has been pushed away, you feel that the air is a little bit cleaner here, so you don't have to make a con. I'm trying. I'm trying not to be in the room. I just mm -hmm. had to move because the wall didn't let me use the spell. Mm -hmm. But I'm trying to like just sneak and and shoot. Sure. 
All right, let's see if this works. First, I will consume cast. All right, let's see if uh, there we go. So three attacks on Valyria. One, two, and three. Two, two, and two. Okay, it's funny, um, but that you didn't have to pull back any shots because that leaves her at one HP. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, so you fling these missiles in the room, and now she's very much very woozy, barely standing up, but she's still standing up. Um, so is there anything else you want to do with your turn? Turn, sorry. Uh, no. Okay. Well, that's, that's pretty much it. Okay. That brings her to her turn. She's still... Um, gonna try to attack Rowan who's pushed her and who has knocked her around into this thing so she's going to try to take a swipe at you Rowan though it does seem kind of weaker almost than normal she does manage to get around your shield because she kind of faints um, one direction and then goes in the other direction now that she's seen how you use your shield um, and she Let does see what I can do about that sure can I reposture? I want to see if I can reposture real quick. Okay. I don't believe I can, but I want to double check. No, you're good. Go on. Keep going. Okay. 10 damage as she claws at you. Please make a con saving throw. <laughs> Ouch. Just sec. For some reason, that ten damage didn't go on my character sheet. Yeah. It was 10 uh, damage, right? Mm hmm. Okay. Con saving. Con saving throw. Yes, please. Uh, is it poison based? Uh, no. Not really. Anyway, it's fine. You make it. It's not a high DC, so um, you do feel something. A kind of come over your your body and almost starts to make you more rigid where it touched you um and Ooh. then you kind of shake it off and it just dissipates paralyzation <laughs> um that's her turn ariel okay well i am just gonna step back here we'll have to step in i guess to see her Mm -hmm. uh, do I need to make the save as I roll into the room? You do not, because she is a little bit further away from the door. And as you step into the room, yeah. you realize it's not just like the stench is in the room, that this toxic gas is in the room. Mm -hmm. It's actually emanating from the doctor herself. Okay. Uh, I'm going to cast sleep. Mm. Um, I'm going to do it. I'll just do it right there. Everybody else should be fine. No, I don't uh, think so. Well, okay, so 22. It, um, the problem is it, she uses one of the 22 on her, and the yeah. 21 uh, after that will go on somewhere else. Yeah. Or all 22 goes on somewhere else if it's undead. Uh, let's see. Um, yeah, so you cast... I'm sorry, I'm reading sleep real fast. Uh, mm-hmm. Out of curiosity, it's all is creatures. That tripped us up. Mm -hmm. Is she still considered yes. an elf? No. <laughs> ah, okay. <laughs> she is not. Because if she was still an elf, this would have been uh, a repeat mm -hmm. of what happened to me in that game. <laughs> <laughs> my fear is she's. I, my fear is that she's. She died and she's come back as something. Uh, yeah. The stench, the claws. I'm thinking ghoul ghast. Um... Yeah. Um, so this is a 20 foot circle. Yeah. So unfortunately mm -hmm. she is considered undead. So she is, uh, not going to be uh, affected by your sleep spell. Um, I think just for the purposes of, um, narrative. So you're not putting all of your, um, friends to sleep, uh, cause it is tight quarters. We'll just say it. 
kind of fizzles out and you're you can adjust the radius to kind of affect only her by pushing it all the way in the corner mm-hmm. of the room or you know you get it to where it's nearly perfect yeah. um and just kind of getting her um just f- so we don't have to run through all of that and I I I hand wave my DM hand wave, uh, giving you guys kind of the advantage here. But she does not fall asleep, um, and it doesn't seem to affect her at all. In fact, she barely even notices you cast anything. Oh boy. Okay. Uh, well, then I will. That's five and fifteen. 23. Um, I will roll behind her. Sure. Um, and then I'm going to try and tip this thing over on her next turn, but I don't have the action to do it now. Okay. So, Prism, your turn. Can you act as your character sheet now? <laughs> mm-hmm. Okay. Yes, I can. Help. Do, do, do. I could get my character to move. Oops, I missed the door. <laughs> All right. Uh, and then we'll just come in here go right there um and she's gonna take a swipe at dr Mm -hmm. livia with the flame blade okay are you trying to kill her or are you trying to you did not see uh luna pull punches really or anything you couldn't really see in there so you wouldn't know um so this is totally up to what your character would do in this situation well i just stepped into range with her so i've got to make that Mm mm-hmm you do dc is low so should be fine. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, there's the save on, on saving throw. Oh, natural 20. So um, you just shake it off. Cat. doesn't bother you. Paper's <laughs> off limits. Sorry. She's trying to chew paper. She's annoyed that I'm not paying attention to her. All right. And then... Just poke her and she should go down. <laughs> oh, no. No, if I poke her, then she's getting what she wants, which is mm-hmm. the attention. Um, <laughs> so That's... I have to, like, physically grab her, and then she's like, ah, no, I hate being held. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so that's, like, punishment. Mm-hmm. Um, all right, so we're going to try to hit this girl with the flame blade, which is... This, this is an attack. Mm-hmm. Uh, are, again, are you trying to roll? knock her out? Here I am trying to per- or kill her. Yeah, here I am trying to preserve her life, and everyone's like, "Let's slaughter her." <laughs> well, I think making that con save and seeing the sort of like I don't know disturbing appearance of this elf prism's mm-hmm. gonna kind of be like, mm, "I will let um, you also make just a." nature check if you would like to see if you can tell what kind of creature she is turned into or what's sure. happening just based on your uh, background sure so yeah, goal goal was 12 so uh it, you get the sense that she is no longer alive she's no longer something mm-hmm. you could save anyway um even if you had wanted to um so there to you you know to this her overall being um, that's not natural. It's not natural to have yeah. undead. So <laughs> go ahead. Yeah, to Prism, this is this is now a situation where, well, order must be restored. Balance mm-hmm. must be set back in the system. Um, this should not, this, it, this is unnatural for her. Um, so this is a melee spell attack. Okay, so mm-hmm. I'm going to have to roll this. Me- so pretty much it. as long as you hit, <laughs> you <laughs> yeah. take her out. <laughs> So it's a 13 uh, to hit. 20? Yep. That's going to hit. Yeah. So how yep. how do you do this finishing blow? Uh, I think Prism would just come up and seeing what's in front of her, just go, no. And take the blade and just swipe with the flames right across mm-hmm. the throat. Okay. Um, sort of cauterize and remove the head. And that is what it does. So instead of spewing blood as... A beheading normally would it because of mm-hmm. the nature of the blade it actually cauterizes as it goes through her her neck and therefore mm-hmm. like there's no excess blood no extra gore um but she does uh her head does come apart from her body rolling onto the floor the stench is still there because she is still mm-hmm. undead and 
she's stinky yeah. um <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but she is decomposition yes she is no longer when you here. said no when you said mm -hmm. no and shook your head to kill her the one kind of looks mm -hmm. over and goes yeah you can't trust some damn elves <laughs> and Rizzo will sort of cock her head to one side All right. And then just sort of look at Rowan. Well, there. Uh, more of the undead you can't trust. <laughs> oh, she's dead, all right. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Prism will sort of uh, flick her, her wrist, and the blade will sort of whoosh, and disappear for the moment. Mm. Still concentrating on it, but just snapping it out of existence for now. I want to flip my shield around. Did those, uh, whatever that guck that she put on it, it dissipated? Did it do any damage to it? It did not do any damage to it. I mean, you see, like, small scratch marks, almost like you would, uh, I That's don't know, fine. like a like a nail gently against uh, some metal or something. You have a good shield, so it doesn't do damage to it, but you can see scratch marks. Mm. All right. All but right. the metal's not pitted and flaking, so no, it's acid. Yeah. Yeah. All right. It's still battley. Let's. I don't want battley. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> so, looking around this room, does it look like she smashed out of that glass tank there? Make an investigation check for me. Um, with advantage. Um, just twenty. Okay. Um, so you're looking at, uh, the room, uh, you're looking at, there's, there are, why did I get blurry? Why is my camera blurry? Uh, okay, whatever. Um, so you are seeing, um, all this glass. It does look like it came from the, um, the case, obviously, and it is all over the floor. Um, but looking at the way that the glass is sitting on the floor and looking at her, she doesn't really have any glass on her. You know, you would expect something like that to leave little bits of like the glass either on her person or she would have cuts or wounds from glass shards. And you see mostly you see like bruises um, or a little bit of the piercing, like the cuts and things from mm -hmm. Luna, but most of it is like, bruising and bludgeoning damage from your friend Rowan. So mm -hmm. you don't get the sense that it was her that jumped out of this. And with a 20, mm -hmm. you're looking at the ground and you also see an empty syringe um, that has like fallen um, into the glass. And that kind of gives you pause, but you can't gather much more from that. Yeah. Oh dear. And checking the corridor to see if any any if our battle attracted any anything. So sure. okay. Roll a perception check for me, Luna. Okay. And uh, per, 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 perception there it is. Oh no. Uh hold on, I wasn't looking. There you go. <laughs> Ew. Yikes. Um, so you look you down do the have hallway. An inspiration. Oh, you do. That's you right. do have inspiration. I already used it. Everybody has one inspiration. Oh no! No, oh, I already used mine. Yeah, oh, I used it on on the attack on the wall on the uh, tentacle thing. Mm -hmm. mm. I forgot. Yep. Oh, that's right. Yep. Uh, that seems like forever ago. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you you look down the hallway, and you try. Are you doing it like? Are you trying to just? peek down the hallway? You're trying to like be stealthy about it or are you just like blatantly looking down the but hallway? I'm, I'm literally just there because we just had a battle and, and I'm just checking to see if if we're looking for a troll. I'm just waiting to see if the troll is around, if he's coming, if anything like that. I'm literally just standing there to try to listen to see if something's coming. Mm -hmm. uh... Do, 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 do. Okay. Um. So you look down. 
um, the hallway. And you do see... What can you see from here, actually? You do see... Um, you think, just based on the look of the place when you guys arrived, you suspect that it's that domed area down there, down this hallway. So you do see, like, an open... Um, like archway and you also see light coming in um from above um and in that light you see like a brief shadow move through it's very quick because they rolled a two on their stealth check um so it's equal to your perception check so you do see it it's very quick you don't know how big it is um so but that uh that's all you see okay um, as Luna's doing that and Prism finishes up her investigation, she's going to look over at everybody. Well, I don't know about you, but I have questions for that scientist out in the hall. He ran to that panic room. Where was he before all this happened? Uh, one... Behind the curtain, getting our cold. <laughs> one thing, before uh... That... I should add to you do prism since you're investigating the room i would say you also mm -hmm. notice that where the doctor has fallen um mm -hmm. in her front jacket or like her lab coat there's a pocket mm -hmm. and you can see like some sort of journal or some book mm. a small like pocket sized one in her pocket as well she definitely pulled that out for sure mm -hmm. let's uh. see But she'd probably go, Luna, dear, would you mind coming here? I, I am, uh, found a journal. I'm not particularly good with the reading. Oh. And she kind of glances over to Ariel like, yeah, been down this road with you before. <laughs> <laughs> um, Ariel is going to uh, look at Prism. Uh, where'd you leave the vial? I hid it. I, I know that. That's kind of what you do. Wondering where it's at. <laughs> I'm not sure I should say. <laughs> we were hired to deliver the vial to her. Will she deliver the vial to her? Ariel. They didn't say she had to be alive when it got there. <laughs> but we deliver it. We get paid. We burn the building down. <laughs> and we leave. Uh, all you the know, problems could, solved. Is it, do we need I, a signature? I have the money. <laughs> I have he the he money. offered to pay us extra to bring it directly to her. Do we need a signature? Well, that's why he owes us uh, more money. She has us more money. So, I, I, ch I checked this uh, book, uh -huh. journal. Yeah. Uh, so you open it up. It is the notes and personal journal um, for her experiments, for Dr. Olivia's mm. experiments, as well as just the goings on um, as she manages this um, laboratory facility. Um, it kind of detail in the beginning, it, it's probably about two years worth of notes. And in the beginning, you're just thumbing through trying to get to the part um, where like the more recent stuff, but you do kind of catch glimpses here and there as you're thumbing through about all the different kinds of experiments um, that they tried to run here. A lot of them involving serums or, um, but there have also been some about uh, different noises that they've heard in the mountains and they were trying to investigate that. Then they were figure out what it is um, or not. They don't figure out what it is. They figure out where it is uh, and where it's mm. emanating from. But the, every time they go to look for it, they can't find it. Um, so they finally find this kind of cavern and it's kind of deep in the ground. So they devise a plan to kind of make some serums to help someone scale that um, it kind of dips down and then there's just a big hole. So they're trying to figure mm. out how to make something that make one of them strong enough to climb and scale down this uh, hole to, to investigate it. Um, that's where you think this idea for the strength serum is. Uh, oh. You do see her notes continue about how she constantly has to fight with uh, Dr. Jameson mm -hmm, to figure out... Uh, just to like prevent him from just trying anything without proper research on like 
rats or because this is medieval times they don't mm-hmm. really care so animal testing is free <laughs> roam so he they're trying it out on different rats and different creatures that they can catch or have brought to them and they just seem every experiment seems to fail and then you get mm-hmm. to that final part where it says that he's done the unthinkable he's used the serum on himself um, because he claimed uh, he he thought that it wasn't working on rats because it's not meant for rats. It's meant for, uh, you know, humanoid creatures to use. So he, mm-hmm. she kept telling him, don't do this, don't do this. Um, so he was like, well, I'll just do it to me. No one can complain. He has, the, she details that they confined him in a pod in, in the laboratory and uh, that she has figured out some sort of antidote that might work but they have to get a specific ingredient and she even denotes that she has put everything together uh, in the library in order to immediately administer the cure as soon as that vial got here um i'm gonna check her body then to see if she has any kind of vial or syringe or something that she might have already get ready and we just need to add the thing we brought, maybe? I don't know, I'm just checking to see if she has anything. I think Prism would point out the, the syringe that was on the floor. Mm-hmm. Um, was that used? It is, yes, it is used. Empty. Mm-hmm. It is empty. Yeah. And as Luna's reading, Prism's step out in the floor and just kind of keep an eye directions. Sure. She wants to head back to the other guy, but she's not leaving them alone. Uh, Prism, make a perception check for me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Let's see. Yeah, not too bad. Seventeen. Okay, so you do see, um, you like peek down the corridor, and you do see movement, um, mm. in that area. It's very quick, but it looked like something maybe went upwards. Hmm. Um, in from like down here towards that observatory section because I rolled bad stealth. Okay. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, so, uh, Luna, you're you looking for the other... Journal has the... Go ahead. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Rowan. You said the journal had the ingredients laid out in the library? <clears throat> yeah, so she said that she had already put... And actually, you see a copy of her proposed um, antidote in the journal she's written it out but she leaves a note mm-hmm. that set, essentially says i've put together all but this one ingredient so that way when we get this ingredient in our delivery we can just throw it in and it finish your cure as quickly as possible mm-hmm. and this message was just from maybe um it's dated so maybe maybe two or three days ago mm-hmm. so There's something in the observatory. The library's down Did, the hall. Yeah, Did that was. Did we see anything in the library that had that was ingredients, like uh, mm-hmm. any beakers or tubes or? Yes. Oh, yes, of course we did. There were ingredients well, go laid mix out this on the stuff table. In it. Go mix uh, this stuff in it then. That's not really my forte. Perhaps Luna, Ariel. I shall, I shall try it out. Mm-hmm. I'm I'll good at mixing you. things. Mm-hmm. Like <laughs> bacon, potatoes. <laughs> uh, as she leaves, she'll just look at Ariel. Keep an eye out down the hall. There was something near the ceiling in the observatory. Okay. Don't do anything um, stupid. I'll go Move. to the corner. She'll step in okay. and get that vial. She'll retrieve the vial from the... Uh, uh, the desk, and give it to Luna. Sure. And then, Luna? since uh, yes. just since there's no light in this room, she'll pull out the flame blade again. Okay. Oh, don't okay. worry. I, ha- I have I have my picture on it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah. So Luna, you everything. It's very easy for you. Actually, you don't even have to make any checks for this because everything but this one ingredient is already mixed, prepared in this. You do look, there is a recipe. Now that you're actually looking at this table, 
the recipe and what she has done to create this antidote is all laid out for you, including very some very complicated steps of like grinding certain things to a powder, you know, and right. exactly when to add water, when to heat it, and for how long. But everything, all of those steps are done. The only thing you need to do now is to mix the two vials together. Um, and it does say that it, as a like a footnote, must be administered while unconscious. Um, but you just you mix them together, swirl it a few times as the directions indicate, and it does change color, um, which is also denoted. It, it says that it should change a slight green color, and it does. And you think, as far as you know, it's ready to go. All right. Well, mm -hmm. I I have it ready for whenever we find a unconscious troll. <laughs> we got it, Trayson. All right. That's wonderful, Luna. So, what would you like to do now? You have the antidote. You have movement in the observatory section of the lab. What would you like to do? Do so you want to check that door or keep going? Well, something's on the roof of the observatory. Went up. On the roof of it? It went up. That's all I saw was movement going up towards the roof. Perhaps climbing the wall. I kind of edge my way to the edge and mm -hmm. start looking up. Sure. So you move down the hallway a little bit. Just make a perception check for me, Rowan. It is a little bit brighter here, but because the rest of the room is so dark, um, on the dome of the observatory are these circular windows, and that's letting in light, evening light, but still a lot of light, which is very bright in contrast to the rest of the building because there are no other windows in this whole facility. You've been through uh, several of the rooms now and you realize that the whole outside is some sort of metal shell <laughs> that probably cannot be penetrated by normal means. So um, that light that's coming in is almost jarring at first, um, but you do see slight movement uh, in the shadows of the observatory. Um, with your with your 20 so what would you like to do where are the move where 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 are the shadows the the They're movement what, kind north, of southeast west in the center of the observatory kind of like let's see like in this uh section but it's okay. way up it's about 20 feet 20 25 feet up because this is a really big uh observatory so there's like a, this is a doorway here, right? Um, yeah, so this is a door and it's another one of those metal looking doors that you saw at the front. And then this is like just an opening. You do see another door down here, another door here that looks metallic again, like the front door. And then you see a little book note stand here. I'm keeping an eye on the shadows, and I mm -hmm. yell back, um, there's there's a book over here and a couple doors. Um, there's something up in the rafters. I'm too curious, and while he's, like, running around, I'll just open this door and check what's up in this, in this place. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sure. Um, so this room, uh, you kind of glance in. It is, uh, it looks like a, there's a map. Uh, there's some sort of, like, device um you're gonna have to investigate it more to figure out what it is but it's kind of metallic mm -hmm. it's got buttons and levers it's got this little dish on it um there's mm -hmm. a bunch of different like x marks on this map as well as a big circle on it um mm -hmm. you see a bunch of different and the, the maps do effort like first glance you can tell that it's the region because you can even see that river where you crossed and where yeah, that bridge it's was. Probably marking the. I'm assuming it's marking the areas that they were, were described on the on the journal, mm -hmm. where they were trying to climb or something. Yep. So you get that sense, but you don't know what this device necessarily does uh, at first glance. Right. Okay. 
interesting. So Prism's going to edge up behind Rowan. Um, flame Blade out. And actually, at this point, I should probably re-up the spell because it's been probably more than 10 minutes at this point. Yeah, probably. So we can say... So. Uh, you can just... She has a torch and a shield. I guess you don't have to. She use might want. The, she might want mm. the blade. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just in case he drops the torch or something, I want to have light because I can't see in darkness. Mm -hmm. Um, so I'll re-up the blade, and carry that in one hand and the staff in the other. Um, and she's gonna kind of edge this way past Rowan mm -hmm. to see more of that observatory kind of looking up. Is there like a staircase or something to get up there? No, there no. is not. You can see, let me see, let, let me look from your perspective. Um, yeah, so you can see some like chairs along the edge. Even from this perspective, you can see, it looks like a globe of some sort in the corner. Mm -hmm. um, you see a big like telescope, though it seems to be angled kind of down a little bit. Like it was looking mm -hmm. into the mountains, not necessarily into the sky. Um, mm -hmm. So you... Like, you get that sense of stuff. Um, but yeah, it doesn't seem like there's a ladder or anything from your perspective that would uh, facilitate movement up into the sky or up into the rafters okay. of the observatory. And we can't and actually see what's in the rafters. Um, well, no. But as you guys approach um, and get a little bit closer, you're making a lot of, not noise, but just... You called mm -hmm. out about the book and all of that. Um, you actually... And it's, go ahead. Uh, I was going to say that as uh, as she moved to this side behind Rowan, uh, Prism would probably have called out, Dr. Jameson, are you here? Okay. Um, so with that call, um, you see a huge hulking form drop down from the center of the observatory and crash into this telescope, shattering it into pieces, which I should have made oh, a token no. for, but I did not. Um, and you see... Oh, God! A big, um, green, hulking Perfect. monster with these fangs and red eyes. And you do see what looks to be remnants of a lab coat uh, on its arms, um, but... That's about all that's left, this little tattered white bit of cloth. And we will roll initiative. Oops, not with that. That's horrifying, and I have no idea how it managed to fit in that tiny, tiny <laughs> glass case. Oh, uh -huh. my gosh. You guys got this, right? I'm, I'm just investigating uh, something inside here. <laughs> oh, boy. All right. Yep. Keeping my streak of low initiatives. That's an eight. <laughs> Some combat music. Roll for my troll boy. Doctor. Oh, I sorry, I didn't mean to make it a let's reveal that. He rolled really bad on his stealth, so you guys really knew he was in there before. <laughs> I think it's supposed to have a surprise round or something in this, but I was like, ah no, you guys have good perception. I'm gonna let you guys at least try to see him. Um also there's not a lot of places to hide in here. All right, so we have our combat. Oh, looks like my troll boy gets to go first. So he drops down onto this telescope, scattering it across the room, glass shattering as the lenses break, which is probably pretty expensive. That sucks. Um, so yeah. <laughs> he's going to I believe he has Especially in the Middle Ages, glass was worth a fortune. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, he's going to multi-attack, so he's going to move up to the doorway um, <laughs> and attack you, Rowan, as you were the first one that it sees, and going to do one bite and two claws. So, I tr Well, I will do the claws first, so it's going to try to claw, claw, pull you in to bite. Um, just for thematic purposes. The first claw misses. The second one does do some damage, though. Um, as it slashes across. You think you got it, but you just barely miss it with your shield. And then he tries to chomp on you. 
with his giant fangs. Um, but that one you're more prepared for. You push him back with your shield a little bit, deflecting his, his head as he c- tries to chomp on your arm. Um, that oh, it is... applied the damage that time. It did. That's because this is just a recolored troll. I don't know why the ghast one, though, didn't work, because I that was in the SRD, so I don't know. But Yeah, I didn't. <laughs> well, that hurts. <laughs> I assume I hear this happening. <laughs> yeah, you hear so a I, giant uh... thud as it like lands on and crashes into the telescope. You hear the flinging of metal as it hits against the metal walls of the observatory. Go ahead. So I start singing before I come out. Oh, oh. This card previews. Visibility. There we go. Blade mm-hmm. song. And that gives me a little more movement. So I'm going to go out here and all the way here. I guess I right here. Sure. Target. That one. And uh, and I move back a bit. That's my turn. All right. So you swipe at him. um, And it does seem... Let me just double check. Uh, Oh, yeah, that's right. That's right. Okay. So you, you swipe at him. And it does cut into his flesh. And it, you know does not look comfortable and he roars at you but his eyes are still on Rowan who's still in front of him um and that will be your turn so that leaves us to Ariel big troll man what do you do uh, if, I'm gonna use bonus action hide if I can sure Roll a I think you're check. still concentrating on fairy fire from before oh you are <laughs> Just right click on concentration and should remove both. Uh, uh, do I need to make a stealth check? Yes, please. Okay. 18. Okay. Noted. And then I'm going to try and split in between the door jam and this. Uh, mm-hmm to get up to the other side up here. Okay. And he does not see you. Move, all... Oh. There. <laughs> he does not oh, see you. I, I think I figured out how uh, the, the sneak attack. Uh, did you, uh, which is an important, uh, nearly important character, right? Did, did you click the medkit button, Kylie? I did. I can do it again. As long as the sneak attack is on the passive abilities instead of being an active one, it should work. Passive abilities, let's look. Did it move? Mm-hmm. If it didn't, we'll figure it out later. I'm just checking. It's yeah, in it's... passive effects right now. Okay. Yeah, it should Keep be going. fine. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, and then I'm going to attempt to stab it with my short sword. Stop it! Ouch. Mean. Uh, you sneak attack. Okay. There mm-hmm. we go. It worked this time. Oh, there we go. Mm-hmm. That worked. Uh, so, GG. 16. It could have been two if you're... you Because you were in tidy sheets before. Could have been something with that, too, mm-hmm. if that was glitching. Oh. Mm-hmm. All right. Ouch. What are you... Did you roll your 2d6? Yeah, it's already yep. 16 total. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Got it. Um, and then I am going to put over to this back corner here. Mm-hmm. Sounds good. All right. Brings up All right. our Kenku friend. Uh, Prism is going to bonus action uh, healing word Rowan. Okay. Uh, she's just going to look mm-hmm. over at him and go, no, seriously, you can't go down now. We need you. And uh, you're going to get 
six points of healing. Nice one. Um, and then she's going to step up next to you, and she's going to take swipe at the troll with her flame blade as her action. Mm -hmm. Um, which is going to be twenty plus five. It's a melee spell attack. Oh no. Oh no, Ooh. that's six. Never mind. Not so you that. try to swipe at it with the fire, and you actually see the troll eyes kind of get a little wide as you do that, and it kind of tries to mm -hmm. move away. Are you going to use your inspiration? I am. I'm going to use <laughs> okay, inspiration. Go ahead. Let's see if it gets any better. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Nice. That's a bit better. Yep, that definitely that hits. Better. Okay. So instead of moving away from your attack, its eyes get wide, and it almost just like stays in fear of this mm -hmm. fiery um blade and so that does nine points of fire damage as she swipes right. it across the creature um and uh yeah that's gonna be prism's turn she's gonna stay where she is because she doesn't want opportunity um, all right and rowan it is your turn so yeah, Rowan's going to just bellow at this thing and uh, swing with his warhammer. All I right. I am going to expend and I am going to expend a dice to do a pushing attack and see if I can knock him back farther into the room. <laughs> Towards or your friend Ariel. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Did it not roll? It didn't. All right, let's try that again. 1d8, roll. There we go. And I have to make a strength save, which will probably be okay, as long as I don't botch it. Natural 20, oh so oh. does not get pushed back. Yeah, it, <laughs> yeah, it stands its ground. But it um, still takes the damage, yeah, right? Seeing, see, what's that? It still takes the yeah, d8 still takes damage. damage. Okay, just double check. Yep. Yeah. But seeing, seeing how this... Uh, this creature's rather large, and I don't like large creatures. I'm going to suck it up and do an action surge. All right. Nice. And we attack again. Mm-hmm. You just hit with your 15. Um, ouch. Did it subtract it? Why did it? Why I don't did... think it was targeted the second attack. Yeah. Why did it untarget? Because <laughs> I think it I targeted. It. Oh, it didn't target the first time either. Let me just make sure he has. It's targeted on mine. It's got the little red. Oh, blinky it's blinks. weird. Well, I'll fix it. It's fine. I can do it manually. It doesn't take that much. There you go. He took um, the damage. But I'm not sure. I'm not sure why it rolled. I'm not sure why it rolled the double D eight though. Oh, it did. Mm. What? I wonder if it's applying the the maneuver die or something. Uh, it is. Oh, that's good because I, it did. That's fine. Leave it like that. Now I'll connect the maneuver beforehand next time because right. I am using my last. I am going to use my last one to drive it back again. Okay. So I'm, I'm guessing you have to use the maneuver before you attack. Maybe. Maybe. Apparently. I'll have to ask the the guys in the modules later. Mm -hmm. Um, okay, so he needs to make a strength save. Yes. Okay. Uh, saving throw. Yes, another one. Yep. Mm, and that seven. will make it. Yep. Yep. So I don't drive it back the second time either. Yeah. Um, but I hit it a couple of times hard. Mm -hmm. And you do hit it really hard. It's just this creature is so large. And like Prism kind of, or Kirsty said aloud, I guess, but prison kind of pointed out like how did this thing fit in that tiny tube um but regardless uh it's it's just too hulking even with your heavy attacks to push back mm -hmm. all right yep. as his turn ends she's gonna yell out ariel get out of there <laughs> and uh just hold her ground in front of this thing okay um, that leads us to the troll's turn. Because you hit it with fire damage, it does not close, his wounds do not close up. Um, so oh. good call on your, uh, inspiration. <laughs> um, so he is going to, 
he's afraid of you, Prism, with your um, your fire. So he's going to try to attack you to get that away from him to to get it out of here. So uh, one bite and two claw attacks to you. So he's going to chop at you first. Oh, it says I'm blocked by a wall. Hold on, I might have to like. Just move the token for a second, just so I can mm -hmm. bite you through this wall. I was wall. trying to drive him back so I could step forward and block him again, but it didn't okay. work. Right. Okay. Uh, um, no, I can't use a reaction absorb element on a bite attack. So. Yeah, it doesn't have a... <laughs> it's not an element. <laughs> uh, no. Okay. There's, there's and then... no element in that. Okay. Element is wrong, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Why is it triggering more, Caster? Uh, because I'm concentrating on a spell. I'm gonna make a concentration check when she's done attacking me. Oh right. Mm -hmm. I don't know why it's triggering it every time, but no. Okay, yeah, because so she's six, concentrating nine. on her flame blade. Is that right? Oh, yeah. Is that what? Yeah. So fifteen. So I have to make a ten DC con, con check. She she loves the con earlier apparently. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that was my mistake. I accidentally clicked on something that. Uh, you you might want to recast it then because you don't you don't have it active right now. Yeah, let me make the saving throw real quick. Yeah. Uh, oh no, yeah. I never don't mind. make it anyway. So yeah. Never mind. So, my flame blade yeah. is gone. Yeah. So the the troll kind of oh, uh, hold directs. On, I have oh. advantage with Warcaster. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. You're right. Yes, you again. do. <sighs> ah, there you go. So um. Your fl your flame blade sputters as you're like trying to hold on to to the the magic as this hulking creature turns its attention to you eyes wide at the flame blade and tries to smack it essentially out of your hand is what it's trying to do mm -hmm. biting your arm and trying to get you um, but you you hold firm um, you've been mm -hmm. in battles before so um, yeah and seeing its reaction to this you know you want to hold on to this flame blade as mm -hmm. much as you can and that will be the end of his turn i believe let me double check yeah all right luna okay ah what to do what to do i guess i'm gonna like run ahead of everyone right here mm -hmm. Take another swing at him. No wait, I'm casting my. As I'm running, I'm I'm, ca I'm casting my 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 shadow blade, so I uh, shoot the rapier, and when I pull it again, it's already uh, full of the shadowy, glowy energy. Sure. Uh, casting these first. Let me unsheath the rapier. There we go. And then I'm going to attack. Okay. Oh. Jeez. Ah, uh, wait. Oh, never mind. Her blade is lit, making light, so it doesn't matter. Uh, and then I'm just gonna move, move back here too. All right. So you unfortunately miss with your attack. Yeah. Um, but you're quick, you kind of slide uh, underneath its arm and back into the corner um, to kind of, well, it's a round room, so there's no corners, but... <laughs> I, ha I have into... advantage on dim light, but everyone has torches and fires and stuff, so yeah. that doesn't that trigger for me. <laughs> yes. All right. You can remove the booming blade from him, I guess, since he oh, didn't yeah, hit. Yeah. Effects, delete. Yeah, he didn't, right, he didn't have to. Ariel. It looked like this uh, doctor would be able to make it out of the door if we were to not be in the room. Yes. Just barely, but it could do it. Okay. It'd have to stoop a Just little bit, barely. but okay. yeah. <laughs> we could we'll give this a try anyway, see what we're going to do. Um, so I'm going to move up here um and i'm going to cast druid craft to try and start this wooden dresser on fire or whatever this this is sure. right here yeah it looks like it's got um 
uh, various drawers of of some mm-hmm. uh, like just tiny drawers. Actually, they're all kind of small. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, you're trying to catch it on fire, right? Yeah, turn it into a campfire, basically. Um. Okay. Uh, That's a good use. Yeah, I would say yeah. It's got paper inside of it, um, so I feel like it's pretty fl- flammable. Um, it is. Uh, yeah, so it's on fire, if you would like. Okay. <laughs> I guess it would also awesome. have light. So here, I'll make it brighter. <laughs> the goal is to burn, burn, get this entire room on fire. <laughs> okay. The walls are metal in this room, just so you know. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, that's wood, and then all the chairs are also wood. Okay. Uh, and then Don't I'm, choke us I'm out with the smoke. <laughs> Go over here. Well, it's an observatory. There should be a hole in the ceiling. There are windows oh, above um, and stuff. <laughs> yeah. uh, gonna do bonus <laughs> action disengage. Uh, that's 5, 10, 15, 20, 20, 35. Well, I can't disengage, but I'll be able to get to there. Okay. Sounds good. Do you want a bonus action? Well, I was gonna say bonus action dash, but that might not be worth it if you want. You might get I'd hit. Have, yeah, yeah. I'd have to either take the, the attack of opportunity. Uh, yeah, I'll just stay there. I can probably survive a round of attacks. Okay. <laughs> Rowan, also, as you say, like, don't smoke us out of here. Um, you look up at the observatory, the hole where the telescope would normally peek out is actually also locked down with a metal, uh, it looks like a sim- similar metal door, though it is a curved door. So there aren't any open uh, holes in this <laughs> uh, observatory. Mm. All right, that leads us to... That is a huge cone. <laughs> Uh, Kiersey, we can't hear you. Sorry, I was trying to get rid of it. I don't know how to get rid of it now. Oh, I can get it. I was trying to measure something. And yes, it's a huge cone. There's a reason I told him to get out of there. <laughs> delete all of them. There you go. Thank you. Mm-hmm. All right, it's your turn, Prism. All right. Um. So Prism is going to... Uh, whoops, skipped my turn. Um, Let me go back. Uh, uh, there you go. She is going to use five charges from the Staff of Frost to cast Cone of Cold mm-hmm. on this thing. Sure. Um, so it's... I can't get it to actually cast the spell. Uh, it could be Click weird that. because of... Unless, yeah, it's equipped and attuned, but... Can you drop it in the... Let me look at you. Hold on. It lets me pull it up, but let me see if I can just find it in items. Uh... There, I dropped it. it. I dropped it in there, but... You might... Mm -hmm. I don't know that that helps. Yeah, when I click on it, it doesn't let me cast the spell. I see. Anyway, it's a 60 foot cone. Uh huh. Um, you, you can probably just drag a spell on her character sheet. That's what I was doing right now, yeah. Spells. 60 foot cone, it just like a con saving throw. And I don't. It does not say 8D8. on the staff. Yeah, it's 8d8. It doesn't say on the staff who. Oh, it's my spell save DC. Okay. Yes, yeah. Um. So my spell save DC is 13. And I'm going to roll 8d8. You should have it in your spell list now, so you can... Oh, target him? Yeah. yeah. So it should automate a lot of that for you now. Thank you. No, don't touch my nuggets, you mangy cat. Oh, you're knocking the computer. <laughs> Brighton, help. Help. <laughs> <laughs> It's telling me a warning. You have no spell slots available, but that's okay. It's probably yeah, just uh, too high level for you, fifth level. Yeah. Oh yeah. Just it's ignore way it. Too high level. Wah! <laughs> yeah, to, uh, staff. All right. Thank you. There we go. Oof. There it goes. Oof. Thirty-three points of damage and con save. Oh my god, he failed. 
Yikes. Yep. By one. Wow. <laughs> good job, good job. Three points of cold damage. Um, as this blast, she basically just brings the sword and this icy staff together and sort of slams it down in front. And this blast wave of cold just shoots out at this troll. Um, and as she does it, she just goes, Luna Duck! And slams <laughs> it down. Um, and it just explodes forward and covers the observatory. I mean, it could go so much further than that. Mm -hmm. um, and it yeah, that's that would be Prism's turn. Uh, a question? Ariel looks up. Luna turned into a duck. <laughs> <laughs> and, like, look around this troll. <laughs> um, a question. Are you trying to kill the troll or are you trying to knock the troll unconscious? Uh, well, I don't... Can I... Can I knock it unconscious with magic? Because that's kind of a weird gray area. I would say um, yes, just because even though you're using this, like the magic is embedded in this staff, you are still wielding it mm -hmm. like a weapon. And with a weapon, okay. you can kind of hold back on your blow. So mm -hmm. I think the same thing could apply to a, a magical yep. weapon like this. So and I, can, I, think what I would she's say yes. trying to do with this spell when she released Cone of Cold is um, freeze him in place. Mm -hmm. So completely immobilize him with the ice and with the unbelievable cold, basically put him to sleep with the cold. Just I like that. basically make him go into like hypothermic shock where he's just so cold so suddenly that he just seizes as is the goal she's going for here. Because we do have a vial to hopefully save this guy. Oops. Um, so she's attempting to just freeze him solid, give him instant hypothermia, and make him go into shock. <laughs> All right. So you guys watch as Prism slams this, uh, this beautiful staff down onto the ground. Uh, it emits a cold burst of magic out from from her and the staff out of the crystal in in fact that sprays across the room coating everything in just uh, a fine layer of frost and ice but also coating this troll knocking it unconscious um almost it almost looks like um and ariel you would notice this in particular because you you know the sleeve spell it almost looks like that as it kind of wavers and then falls over um and it, it is it disappeared from me did it, it I, I can see it on the stream but on my screen is not there i don't Wait, know here. what happened let me do this Sometimes and then do this oh, that there we go now that we can one. see it okay <laughs> uh, <laughs> i just had i accidentally made him invisible and then tried to make him back real fast <laughs> and that probably messed up for you um but yeah so that will end combat as this troll is now incapacitated on the ground but for who knows how long as you do see um thematically we'll just say that some of the wounds are closing up even as it is uh because you did not attack it with fire, fire so yeah, mm -hmm. yeah well as the round. as yeah. the troll is unconscious i will uh, administer the serum that i created earlier Sure. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Changing the... Roll for serum. <laughs> Hold on, Yay. I'm changing the music too, sorry. Um, all right, so that should be good. But, all right, so you go ahead and you administer this um, serum. Do you, did you use, like, are you pouring it in its mouth? Are you? Did you get a syringe? How are you administering uh, Yeah, I, I assume I, we got the, the syringe that was on the ground earlier, because I, I, I was looking for it at the, at the... So I will try to literally put it in, in his body. Sure. Mm -hmm. And you're not a doctor, so... You know, you kind of just stab it into him. You don't like look for a vein or anything. You, you, this is not your expertise. And so I try just... to at least put it on his chest okay. so it goes somewhere. You know. Sure. Person's like, oh. well, it's too late. And, like, and, <laughs> and it pushes. You push all that serum into his body, and at first, nothing happens. You're like, uh, is, is it working? And then about. Mm -hmm. It took, takes about 30 seconds, honestly, but those 30 seconds seem to like drag out as you're watching its wounds mm -hmm. close up and you're like, oh God, we're just going to have to kill this thing. Um, but then slowly the wounds are healing 
And also the troll is shrinking, 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 shrinking. Mm. And then suddenly you have a very naked human male uh, <laughs> who is lying on the floor. Um, I don't have a picture for him, actually. A missed opportunity. <laughs> Um, but a naked picture. <laughs> well, I mean, no, like a a, a portrait. Um, but right. you you see this guy. He's still a little beat up. He has like bruises and stuff on his um, person. Um, but he kind of comes to and just goes, "Oh, what happened?" Prism is standing over his head, looking down at him. Mm -hmm. Just like beak pointed straight down at him. <sighs> and she's tipping her head from side to side. And he sees you. He's not seen um, uh, Kenku before. Uh, mm -hmm. And he, at first, like, it takes him a second. You can see, like, he's not really here yet. And then he sees you and he starts, mm -hmm. like, he, like, tries to get away from you. Kind of scramble away on the floor. Um mm -hmm. He's like, what? What is going on? And he now he well, sees. Well, bless your heart, honey. Let this hold, hold, hold. be a lesson. I, 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 hold on. I grab my hat and I put it like you know on. Uh -huh. <laughs> Just I, I, I'm, I'm covering him up, you know. I'm uh -huh. like, dude, please. He like grabs it. He oh. clutches it in his hands and he's like holding it real close. He's like, what is going on? What has I, happened I, to I the telescope? <laughs> Prism tips her head. Well. Bless your heart. Let this be a lesson to you, you foolish, foolish man. You do not inject yourself with serums you do not understand. That was incredibly foolish, and you got people killed. K killed? And you and see, you like... smashed your own telescope. <laughs> you see, he, he just visibly... When you say some people got killed, his mm -hmm. uh, face gets pale. Uh, his, and he mm -hmm. just goes, what, what do you mean, killed? Did I kill someone? And he starts kind of like shaking. Who, who mm -hmm. is, is, is Dr. Stoutbrand here? Dr. Livia? And he just starts calling Before for them. Find, <laughs> I, I, I trying to like not even care for what he's saying. Is there any water around? That thing is on fire. And I point to the... <laughs> <laughs> to the... <laughs> and it is, it is on fire, but there's not a lot of other stuff in here to like catch on fire. It is a metal dome but the smoke is starting to fill the right. room um so as you say this you guys turn and realize oh right yeah that <laughs> um i, I, I just step, I just step back mm -hmm. well, well i guess i gotta to put it out prism will just lift a hand and write uh, and put frostbite on the flames sure and i'm not a very hand. elemental wizard so i can't really like turn it off <laughs> <laughs> yeah she'll just hit it with some frostbite Sure. So now, still staring at at Jameson. Pretty much the whole room is now covered in a layer of frost, um, and it is mm -hmm. at this moment um, that you all hear like a little chime. It's like do 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 do, and then mm -hmm. a click, and all the lights. Hold on, come back on. But that involves me ah. pushing some stuff, and you hear. Rowan, in particular, you would hear it, um, but the, uh, oh, and sun, there we go. Um, you hear uh, a click as both, uh, oop, I mean the wrong thing. Both of these doors here make a click sound mm -hmm. as though no longer being locked, um, though they don't open because ah. it's still, you know, protecting from the elements outside. Uh, and... Uh, you also hear a feminine voice um, uh, that just says, all clear, danger averted. And then that's it. <laughs> As to your question, um, South Brand is in the panic room. And, uh, well, the doctor we were sent to bring something to is dead. Oh, she no. uh, became a ghoul. And you just see, like, the horrible realization on his face. And he just, uh, his head falls into his hands. And he just kind of, he's trying to hold it together. You see his eyes get mm -hmm. teary, full of tears. And he just goes, what have I done? What have I done? Uh, 
And um, let's see. Do, do, do. I think he is, says something in particular. Do, 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 do. He does not say here. No, but he does. He just start. Uh, he's like, I kind of it's faint. But I do remember something happening. I remember her standing over the, the case and me banging on it. And then she had a thing in her pocket. I saw it sticking out and I, I think I injected her with it. And he just starts crying. He's, he realizes mm -hmm. that he is probably the reason, um, even though it's fuzzy for him. Mm -hmm. um, with the alarm turning off, uh, Dr. Stoutbrand comes rushing down the hallway. Uh, is everything all right? He like peeks down the corner. Uh, is everything? It is. Please bring some pants. <laughs> pa pants? And he like yes, turns. Pants. He turns around and he goes back, <laughs> rushes out um, of the room, and then comes back down the hallway carrying uh, some pants. Um, and he like hands them to you, Luna. Why do you need pants? Because I need my hat back. And I go back to the guy. You actually want a hat back? I want my hat back. <laughs> I mean, it's a big hat. I don't think he is that big. <laughs> uh, I put, I put the, I remove my hat and I put the, the pants on top of him, you know, and mm -hmm. just like, just like, how do you say that? Uh, cleaning it a little bit. Yeah, no, just cleaning it a little bit. Yeah. All right. And Prism kind of looks down at him, head tilted, and then looks over at uh, what's his name? Storebrand? Stout Brand. Yes. Stout Brand. At Stout Brand. And looks between them. Let this be a lesson to you, gentlemen, in subverting the natural order. And you see Stout Brand looks. Did you notice that Stout Brand's uh, name is an oxymoron? <laughs> He's neither stout, and it's definitely not his brand. <laughs> <laughs> He's um, a coward. You notice that uh, Stout Brand looks uh, also pale and kind of like, you can see he's still kind of anxious. Um, and mm -hmm. on his way by, he definitely saw the mess that was in the experimentation room, as well as the body mm -hmm. as he peeked in through each room trying to find you guys. Um, mm -hmm. And he... He looks at um, Jameson and he goes, we've, we've got a lot of work to do, I, I think. Um, and Jameson, he tries to like compose himself, trying to pull himself together. And he's like, I swear, I swear to you that I will fix as much as I can. I cannot bring her back, but I can at least continue her work and, and hopefully not make a... A mistake like this again and you can tell this is a pretty young male you know mm -hmm. scientist um who just was a little full of himself thinking that he had the perfect concoction um and yep. with that stout brand tosses you rowan another bag of coins um and that is the end of this one shot so, <laughs> hey, we did finish hey, it. We did finish it. Ariel was... will look up at Prism and say, "You know, I, I got to kill both of them and burn this place down, right? This is the stuff that can't get out." <laughs> it's not, not natural stuff going on in the center. It, if I don't do it, my lady will show up and do it. She's going to be a lot less nice than me about it. Oh. Oh, let me let, let, let me just take some notes let, before you destroy it. Let us perhaps, <laughs> let us Did you say you have to kill them? The mistakes. First. These these people doing unnatural research. Mm -hmm. Yes. You can't have yeah. them creating more troll potions. Ariel, I am aware of what your lady might such things, but perhaps we let them attempt to correct their ways before we sick all of the Fey realm. On. Mm. Might be for the best. Minimize the conflict between realms just a bit. They have. That's what uh, I'm trying to do. Well, they have hopefully learned a valuable lesson today. And she looks at both of them. And they're uh, especially and... Jameson. He's just like 
He's trying not to sob anymore. He's trying not to cry and be upset about what has happened, but he's nodding and he's like, yes, I, I, I promise you no more troll serums. Hmm. Perhaps avoid the serums of unnatural natures altogether, young man. Absolutely, absolutely. And he's just like, he's like anything to just fix <laughs> and, you know, fix what he has done. He's, he's now, all for. Ariel, you know that strange sound they were hearing from that cavern? That sounds like an interesting quest. <laughs> Perhaps we ought to go there next. Okay, we'll go there first. <laughs> and then if this place is still standing, we'll discuss taking it off the map. All right. All right. Now, I tell you, your wings will come in handy climbing down into a cavern. <laughs> You're talking about wings. <laughs> he just, like, <sighs> turns around in circles. And Wings that, for losers, man. That is where we will end off our our one <laughs> shot as you guys contemplate diving into a mountain cave. Um, but yeah, so I'm surprised. Actually, adding that extra bit kind of made it a fuller. I mean, we are about 20 minutes over time, but I feel like it was mm -hmm. just enough um, to kind of yep. round it out because yeah. otherwise it would have been short. Yeah. Even with nice. four people, because uh, combat did go pretty quickly with just the four of you. I think if it was mm -hmm. more people, well, one, I'd have to like up the troll health or something because you guys probably would have mm -hmm. kicked him real fast. But yeah, it um, kind of did a little too fast, like one, one two rounds maybe. Well, yeah. that staff is uh, kind of yeah. That staff is pretty insane for a, a fourth yeah. level character to have yeah yeah <laughs> it was like, definitely overkill three to five rounds is pretty good balance you know? yeah yeah, yeah. um well I, also PG. jerry's always wanting magic items so it's like well i could give one <laughs> i guess this time <laughs> uh but yeah so i think this one is a pretty good one shot though i added obviously as i usually do i added a lot of background to it then like mm -hmm. On the, there was like a map in the book for this one. And in there, mm -hmm. that room that has like a radio, it looked like a radio, like tower mm -hmm. kind of thing. Um, yeah. It had like a map with a bunch of X's on it, which I couldn't denote mm -hmm. necessarily in here. But I was like, they don't mention anything. They don't mention why they're in this remote location, really, <laughs> other than they're doing experiments they shouldn't be. Um, but I was like, how do how do we play into this? So, yeah, I'm gonna mm -hmm. try it. But I also should show the up. The complex almost seems like the complex almost seems like an old module from uh, way way back, and I can't think of the name of it. But it's actually a crashed um, it's a crashed starship. Oh, uh -huh. cool! Uh, it's got robots and lasers and things like that on the yeah that that's your your enemies are robots and laser with laser eyes and things like that that's cool <laughs> because I the like technology it. with the metal mm -hmm. you know the, well that was the other thing it was of... it was supposed to lock down it doesn't say what it was like made out of or anything so i was like mm -hmm. well if you're locking it down i get it like we have magic you could lock it down that way but yeah. i still feel like Something like that would not prevent a troll, like a, even just a wooden door, would not prevent a troll mm -hmm. from just bashing out of the facility. And then yeah. in my head, too, because you mentioned, like, how did he fit in that tiny thing? Well, to me, mm -hmm. I think he was still kind of growing while he was in there. Oh. And then just as you guys arrived, it like he burst through and mm -hmm. took on the full form oh, because... He was in the glass case. Yes, he yeah. was. He was in the glass he, case. Yep. I figured okay. he was like in stasis or yes. something. Like they'd managed to subdue him to put him in stasis after he injected himself, and then mm -hmm. boom. What was the rat in the in the um, solution? What would the solution have done? Um, I don't know. I was gonna just kind of wild magic surge it um, because that's also not oh, in okay. there. <laughs> <laughs> um, but um, there is technically, if you go, there's like a storage room. I'll unpause it if you guys mm -hmm. like want to look at the map better. Although I, I made it so you could see everything. But there's a storage room yeah, over here um, that mm -hmm. has a pack of rats in it. So if you had gone in there, that's the rats that they use for experiments. 
Um, mm-hmm. So they would have come out and tried and to they, attack you. The doors that are unlocked are literally just exits, right? Yeah, so mm-hmm. this one is an exit. Yeah, this yeah. one's an exit. And then this one here is an exit. So those are the ones that were on lockdown. Um, right. Yeah. Super cool. Yeah. But yeah. Loved it. This was uh, fun. Good. I'm glad. Very cool. What is it about Evan's... What is it about your character, Evan, that you uh, mm-hmm. would want to kill these guys? I can't hear I you, Evan. Evan. You're muted. <laughs> no, it's unnatural magic, and uh, he's sort of a agent for a fey uppity up. That mm-hmm. his job is to make sure stuff that goes against deals that have been made, you know, don't happen. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. So the the unnatural magic is sort of a, a deal breaker in their realm. Hmm. Hmm. All right. Uh-oh. Well, with that, I'm going to at least close out the stream. So <laughs> thank you, everybody. <laughs> you guys, we're, we'll talk forever otherwise. Thank you guys so much yeah, for wa- watching. Um, if you want to be a part of a Run My One Shot stream or you have a one shot you want me to run, I'm always looking for those too. Um, I recommend joining the Discord server. There should be a link down in the description. If not, hopefully I remember to at it later <laughs> but if not um there most of my videos have that link and that it would be the best place to share either one shots or to uh sign up for this because i do ask nobody could it is easter weekend nobody really could jumped on it this this time um but we have had uh guest members of the community in past streams so we're always happy to pull someone else into the fray more victims uh <laughs> for for my uh my baby kraken <laughs> um so uh thank you guys so much for watching and i will see you guys in the next one bye and the broadcast hit the button